So we're going to call the meeting to order. I'm, it's 7.06. I'm joined by my colleagues, Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Walner, Mr. Studo, and Mrs. Gonzalez. And we're going to begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we're going to start with our COVID-19 update. We'll turn it over to you, Mr. Gilberto. And you're muted. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm just, uh, just reading from our last update post posted uh, the middle of last week. The town hall reopened for walk-in service on Monday, May 17th, with walk-in hours being Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8.30 to 11.30 a.m. And Tuesday and Thursday from 1 o'clock p.m. to 3.30 p.m., uh, facial coverings are required to be worn in town hall with accord in accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts current facial covering order. Still encourage folks to conduct business online or via telephone and uh, information um, to access departments is available on the um, on the town website at www.northreadingma.gov. Flint Memorial Library is open for by appointment browsing as well as contactless pickup through the uh, activity room downstairs at the library. Uh, facial coverings are also required to be worn in the library in accordance with the state's current facial covering order. The O'Leary Senior Center remains open for in-person appointments by request. Folks should call 978-664-5600. I will just note that as they look to resume in-person events, there, um, there is some conversation about whether or not we'd be able to take advantage of currently available space over at the Hillview Function Facility, um, a larger space that might be more conducive to a socially distanced type event. And that's something for which there is some discussion happening and we're, we're optimistic that there'll be some good news in, um, in the coming weeks with regard to that for at least uh, one event in June. Um, so there'll be more to come with regard to that. I will just note the health department's working with North Reading Public Schools to partner with Pelmed's Pharmacy to offer optional COVID-19 vaccination um, sites to students age 12 and up, and information has been forwarded by North Reading Public Schools directly to families. The most recent uh, state public health report um, that, we, uh, that we publicized was uh, from May 13th, indicated 1,430 total cases. Um, total case count in that period was 26. I can report that the public health nurse reported that as of this morning, we were actually monitoring 15 cases. So uh, those numbers are certainly, I think, trending in the, uh, in the right direction. I think like everybody, we're awaiting some more guidance um, from the state with regard to the uh, orders being lifted as of May 29th, as well as the ending of the state of emergency, which we are told will take place on June, uh, June 15th. And um, that's really, I guess, the summary for the uh, general COVID-19 updates. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. All right, our next order of business is public comment. Do we have anyone joining us this evening that wishes to speak? If you do, please raise your hand or use the chat room. Seeing none? Not seeing any. Moving on to our next order of business, which is to introduce Mr. Parisi. Thank you, uh, Madam, Madam Chair. So with us this evening is our new um, Director of Public Works, Joe Parisi. He uh, started with us on May 12th and has been um, quickly coming up to speed with many issues that are going on here in, uh, in town. So uh, first, Mr. Parisi, I see that you're on there. Welcome this evening. Thank you. Nice Welcome. to be here. Welcome. Um, I will uh, just give a little bit of background, which I previously reported to the board. Um, you know, Mr. Parisi brings 19 years of experience as director of public works in both Gloucester and Rockport, as well as nine years in the mayor's and assessor's office in the city of Gloucester. He has a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Worcester Polytechnic Institute and is also a licensed construction supervisor and a Massachusetts certified public purchasing official. So uh, we certainly appreciate his experience and credentials and welcome him here. Um, he's been meeting um, weekly with myself, the public safety director, the finance director and the human resources director, um, coming up to speed on, uh, on things. And um, um, you know, certainly the, the feedback has all been, uh, been good, Joe. So we're glad to have you here. Um, you know, while we are here, I see that the operations manager is uh, here as well. Mr. Deming, good evening. Mm -hmm. 
For those of you who do not know Chris, um, but I think everyone here does know, Chris has served as the acting director for nearly a year. Um, and um, you know, we are, we are we're so grateful to him for his, for his experience, for his willingness to, to stand into the role um, and for his, uh, his leadership in the, uh, in the department um, you know, through um, a transition that, you know, and, and candidly, as I've said in many other forums, you know, Chris has been um, the, the, uh, one of the few constants, uh, perhaps with the water superintendent as well, over the past seven years, six years that we've gone through some transition in the department. And so, you know, he's, been, he's a critically important part of the team. Um, despite his age, he often is a senior person in the room as well. I know there were many conversations that took place over the past year where that was the case. Um, based on his, his lengthy experience. And, um, you know, Chris, I just want to say thank you for, for your hard work, you know, wearing two hats for nearly a year, two very demanding hats in the operations manager. Um, you know, the community really knew the decisions that lay in your hands, you know, day in and day out, night in and night out, night out and how they really affect folks every day. Um, I think they would be really, you know, they, they, I think any one of us would be potentially overwhelmed by them. So I just want to say thank you for your, for your efforts and for your, your willingness to, to serve in that capacity, Chris. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. I, um, you know, for Mr. Parisi, through you, Madam Chair, um, you know, we have quite a bit going on, as I think you've learned <laughs> over the past couple of weeks and in our discussions prior to it. Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're certainly, uh, we, I think we feel comfortable that we have a candidate who's able to hit the ground running and, uh, and help us through, particularly when it comes to our wastewater planning initiative. I mean, that's something that really you know, having your expertise, we're, we're, we're very excited to have you here, given your experience in Gloucester and Rockport with issues related to wastewater. So I just would ask everyone to join me in welcoming Joe. Um, and uh, Joe, well, pleased to have you aboard. Um, nice to be here. Uh, I'm, you know, I am coming up to speed. It's been almost a couple of weeks now and a um, lot to uh, sort of uh, get acclimated to, but, um, you know, Chris and the others have shown me around town and brought me to some of the areas that, um, you know, I, I need to be aware of uh, some of the projects, the buildings. And uh, so it's been a, a hectic couple of weeks, but uh, it's been good. And I'm glad to be part of the, the team. Great. Thank you. Thanks. That's great. Thank you to Chris. We really appreciate your effort and everything you've been doing. And you do join us quite a bit and help explain a lot of things to us. And you're working on so much for the town and we do appreciate your effort and and Mr. Parise, you'll be happy to know we don't expect you at every meeting. <laughs> so we appreciate you you coming here and I'll open it up to any of my colleagues that'd like to make any comments or Mr. O'Leary. Uh, first of all, just to Chris again, you know, you, you stepped into a, um, a situation that uh, you weren't necessarily anticipating and you took it on and you handled it with flying colors and uh, again, everything that you did over the last year or so has been uh, greatly appreciated uh, from the little things of the day-to-day -day operations and also just jumping in as far as the wastewater uh, um, issue that we've been facing. And you were right right there. So again, for all that you've done and all that you continue to do, it's greatly appreciated. And uh, we're glad you're here. You're truly an asset. And uh, to Mr. Parisi, uh, you know, welcome from Cape Ann. I mean, not too many people cross over the bridge to come <laughs> up here. So it's good to have you. And uh I, th I think I know your family. Um, Priest, you know, is fairly well known down in Boston. <laughs> Real public servants too, and uh, welcome aboard. Look forward to working with you and having you here. Great, thank you. Mr. Gonzalez? Yeah, I would like to echo my colleagues and, um, you know, Chris and I worked together on a few things and um, I interacted him with him quite a bit and he always answered me as soon as he could and just, always a professional and um i want to thank you chris for for that and um mr parisi i would like to welcome you uh, we're happy to have you and i think you have a great crew so i agree thank you mr walner yeah just I, I i won't repeat i'll just say uh you are inheriting a very uh cohesive group and chris had a lot to do with that so um and i have the strong feeling that the people that work within that department really like what they're doing and they're encouraged to keep growing within their department. So I think it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it, it's always felt good to me. So uh, welcome and thanks so much, Chris. We, you know, for the few times we have talked, it's been a good exchange and I've appreciated your leadership. 
Thank you. Mr. Strudel? Well, everybody already said everything I was going to say. So all I can so all I can say is, Mr. Parisi, welcome. And, uh, you know, thank you for, um, you know, thank you for coming to North Reading from, as Mr. O'Leary said, it is uh, an interesting drive. So we appreciate it. Somebody of your qualifications. No, I'm glad to be here. Drive's not too bad. And um, it's a great community to be working for. I'm excited. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. All right, our next order of business is remote participation for public meetings and a vote to authorize. Mr. Gilberto. Potentially, Madam Chair, you know, so, mm. um, yeah. I, you know, we're, we're in this sort of no man's land right now, so to speak, mm -hmm. where the governor has said he will, he will be lifting the emergency declaration as of June 15th. The legislature has committed to, you know, looking at the many executive orders he has issued and determine you know, which, if any, need to remain in effect um, after the expiration of the, um, the emergency declaration. Um, one of them that we, this board has been very active on and continued to advocate as recently last week, the Secretary Keneally, is with regard to the outdoor dining, the temporary authorization for outdoor dining, the 60 day period ending. And I, I think honestly, exactly what we thought was gonna happen or could happen is what's happening, that it's gonna be the orders lifted June 15th, and technically the outdoor dining temporary approval would expire August 15th. And for those who have invested in the infrastructure, that, that's troubling and concerning. We heard directly from a restaurant owner on Tuesday of last week. So, you know, that's one area that we know the legislature is working on. This particular area is probably the other that's most directly impacting um, local government, which is um, <clears throat> the ability to conduct virtual meetings, which uh, all things being equal, if the order expires, we would no longer have the ability to conduct virtual meetings. And well, I, I believe that something will come out of Beacon Hill that may allow something of that effect to take place. You know, we don't know what that will be or when it will happen. Uh, one thing that the select board had discussed and uh, by no means had, had, had decided one way or the other on um, was whether or not to allow remote participation for public meetings under a pre-existing statute that allowed for uh, members to participate re remotely. Um, you still would be required to have not only for the select board, but for any public body, a quorum meeting uh, in, a, in a public building accessible to the, uh, to the public. But um, there is this uh, option if the board were so inclined to allow for remote participation. And I do have to be upfront, you know, as I sit here today, you know, it would be probably pretty rudimentary technology we would be talking about while we're awaiting this further guidance at the state level probably through conference call and not even through video and probably limited to the members of public bodies. So I don't want to sit here and profess that it's a great solution, but I do feel it was something that you just ought to be aware of as, as an option that's out there. And Madam Chair, through you, I know you're very familiar with it, you know, from your, your familiarity with the open meeting law, but I did ask the town clerk to join us as well, um, just to assist in answering any questions that might come up. Uh, I mean, I think I think we probably have some we probably have some questions, and, and unless we have some sort of understanding of te te technologically, the people joining remotely, it's, it's my understanding they have to be seen and heard, and they have to hear and see, and not just us, other colleagues, the five of us, but you, our clerk whoever's joining us from the public in person. So I wouldn't know, I don't know how you, that, what is your proposal as to making that happen by? At the moment, it would only be audio that we'd be able to provide. It would not be video, at least not in any reliable way. Um, at this stage, um, there would be some work that would need to be done with regard to it. Uh, and uh, if I, my reading of this is incorrect, certainly the town clerk for, for yourself could, can correct me, but I, I was under the impression that we would be able to provide uh, telephonic communication, um, two-way telephonic communication where the person can hear everybody and everybody can hear the person in the room. Um, but we right now, the, the video, I, I think we could get there, but I can't responsibly tell you that we're there right now because we're just not. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Gilberto? Mr. O'Leary? Um, uh, well, it's to Mr. Gilberto, but also to my colleagues here. Are we looking to endorse the um, legislative package that the uh, Mass Municipal Association has been um, advocating for, for the interim? I mean, they were talking about remote meetings and hearings, um, you know, vote by mail, electronic signatures for nomination papers, expedited permitting for outdoor service, uh, takeout alcohol, 
and expanded local licensing authority, which again would help address the uh, outdoor dining. So it, to me, uh, Mass Municipal Association um, is a collector of great amount of data and uh, experiences from across the Commonwealth and um, very thoughtful organization. And um, they've come up with a, a short list of legislative, uh, the legislative agenda to be acted on quickly. And I think we should be endorsing that, uh, that effort. So I don't yeah. know if, if the administrator has, has had a chance to take a look at it and has opi would opine on it. Well, that's right. That's, I think, um, although this particular topic might be covered there, that isn't really something on our agenda to discuss this evening. And I would you know, expect if that was something that we were considering that we should have that in advance to be able to contemplate that. But in terms of just meeting rem in terms of voting to do remote participation, I think, do you have any questions with regard to that of Mr. Gilberto? No, other than it's been happening for the last year, what would be so difficult to continue that? Why? Oh, because the, because of the end of the because no, 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 but he said you know technologically yeah. it's only audio. I mean, what's been oh, happening with oh, all the other mean, boards, committees, and commissions? Yeah. You know, what, what would be so difficult to continue on with the methodology that's been employed for the last fourteen months? Needs to go, Barrado. Well, we, we don't have the legal authority to do that. I mean, no, uh, Mr. O'Leary is saying you we're doing it now. So, it, what's the technological issue with just via Zoom allowing a member to join? The, the quorum via Zoom? I, I, I guess we would be talking about providing, you know, staffing for the, the video being provided, which is something we'd have to look to do. Um, we'll be talking about two different forms. We'd be talking about an in-person forum in room 14, and we would then, I'm assuming you're in 14, because the other offices are being used at the moment for, for other purposes, but we would be talking about an in-person meeting in one setting and then a virtual meeting in another. It's almost two meetings going on at one time. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying it couldn't be done. It's just, it, it, it's something that you know, may be a bit more complicated. Um, I, I don't want to sit here and say it can't be done. I just, that we would have work to do to be prepared to do that. Right now, the forum is only in one spot. It's all virtual with everybody having their own device. You'd be talking about mixing the two, which again, I'm not opposed to. It's just, I don't want to sit here and represent that we've got all those bugs worked out yet because we don't. So for a vote to authorize, how would that, because I would assume the vote that we're taking this evening on this, that that's a, there's a plan in motion for that. So that a vote to authorize would allow us to just continue remote under the, you know, the way the law stands currently. So what, what are you proposing in terms of how we would be able to, to do that? At the time, for the time being, it would be to uh, allow for uh, audio communication for uh, a third party board member. And that's not to say that between now and the next regular board meeting, we can't expand that. I just, this is all developed somewhat quickly and I don't wanna represent that we have that challenge solved right now because we don't. Because I'm, I'm in other words, you're gonna put a phone in front of someone's microphone. Is Correct. that, and yeah. then another phone for the other member in front of someone's microphone. If that were the case, yes. And in, in ensure that those people can be heard by members of the public that are viewing it on NORCAMP. Correct. For a televised meeting, yes. Okay. So that's the that's actually the plan. At this stage, yes. Okay. All right. Mr. O'Leary, any other questions? No, other than we 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 considered this proposal, what, a couple of years ago? Yes. Right. And I don't think it prevailed, correct? I mean, how is it? For the same logistics, yeah. Mr. O'Leary. I think for the same, how, I mean, we get complaints. People can't hear us on NORCAM. <laughs> no offense to you, Mr. Healy, but we get, I can't hear you speak up, talk louder, you know. And we're pretty loud people. But all right. Do you have any other questions, Mr. O'Leary? No, just a comment. I'm actually in favor of it. All right. Mr. Walner, a little confused at the topic, so I'll 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 uh, default back to the wiser ones who know what they're talking about. Hmm. Ms. Mrs. Gonzalez, questions, comments? Uh, more of a comment. I just feel like it should be one or the other. Um, I think it's just a bit confusing to have 
phone and and I mean we're either going to be in person or we're not. Okay, Mr. Strudel, comments, um, questions. Well, yeah, a couple comments. So first, I mean, I I didn't expect it to happen this soon, but the last board meeting when I mentioned we had to start preparing for these things, and you know, everybody was still thinking that August first, you know, we had till August first, like. You know, I wish it didn't happen this fast, but this is exactly what I was talking about, that these things were out of our control and, you know, neither the CDC or Governor Baker really, you know, cared what Vincenzo stood in his basement thought about it. So, but what I like to say is that um, to me, um, I did look into it a little bit and I spoke to a couple people. Uh, the technology is out there. It is expensive. And without state subsidy, I highly doubt a lot of communities are going to get it. It's, it's out there. I think Reading used a form of it. Um, and, and expensive is relative, right? To what we, you know, to what we spend. Um, also the technology, it's a K-22. Because if you do it and you do it properly, you want to also try to get the public to be able to do it, right? If you want to do like a fairness. I know we're only talking about one thing here, but guess what? The same reason that we say Zoom is great because it allows some that are more uh, maybe disabled or elderly that can't get to the meeting. This technology is not like the iPhone where you touch the home screen whenever you get confused. It is not that simple. So I just want to state that before, you know, we, we get all about everyone being an expert. And I agree with Mr. Walner. There's a lot of people better than me at this. So, but my comment though is I'm looking at this from a different angle. I, I don't support it because I feel that this board needs to show symbolism that we are ready to get back to business with the business community here and the people of North Reading. And I feel that we can do this safely based on the numbers. And also because we don't have the technology, it's a moot point. So this conversation I feel like is way premature because I think even if the state next week said, hey, we're going to let you do this remote, but you got to have the technology. Yeah, we still have to figure out the trash fee. So why don't we just get in line? So the point is that I think that for the time being, until we have technology that uh, can, can address the issue so it does work properly and we don't get the, hello, hello, the Verizon commercial, can you hear me now? I think that we should just go in person, do it as safely as we can, which you know I'm not gonna sit here and rattle off the 350 numbers I have from the CDC that tells us it's safe. And just, you know, wait for spam call. Sorry, spam. Um, so, so that's my thing. I, I don't support it in its current form because when I first saw it on the agenda, I just, it, it took me two phone calls to people that know technology a lot better than me to tell me that even if you guys, even if you could authorize it, you don't have the technology to properly do it. So that's my comment. So that would, I think I have, I think that's what my question would be because I, it's, it's already allowed under the law. And if we take a vote on this this evening, we, we better have a plan because we're not just voting for the select board. We're voting for every other commission, committee, subcommittee, uh, board, school committee, whoever else is meeting, wherever else they're meeting. So to me, it, it would, it, it, I'm assuming it requires some sort of specific program or software or uh, platform for us to be able to, to do it. And other communities have it and other communities have done it. So I think we should ha be, have that information available because it is already allowed. And if we're gonna do it, we have to put our money where our mouth is and make sure that we're prepared for it. So, um, but I just, I know um, Clerk Stats is here too, and she loves to tell us information about this stuff, and she's our expert on this. So we're going to let Clerk Stats tell us how this can happen and how it can be compliant with the law. So please welcome Clerk Stats. Well, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on it because our feet aren't even wet with this. Um, but you are right that if you authorize this, this applies to every single board and committee, any public body under the open meeting law. And you as a board are responsible to fund it for all of them as well. So you have to be prepared for that. 
um, as Mr. Gilberto said, these meetings still have to be physical in nature with a quorum of every public body in attendance, physically in a meeting room, accessible to the public, accessible to the handicapped. So that is quite different than the Zoom meetings of the past year or 15 months, whatever it's been. Um, I, this board, your board has the authority to set parameters to as to the use for, of remote participation that would apply to all boards and committees. I will say that the one, one board um, that is outside of your uh, authority is the um, um, Disability Commission because they have the ability to adopt remote participation even without your approval for the uh, entire town. Mm -hmm. And that's given the nature of the composition of their board. Um, they haven't, to my knowledge, um, done that yet. Nobody's uh, informed me. But you also have to be aware that, you know, with a quorum in the room, uh, it will be up to the chair to determine who is able to participate remotely. And you might want to set parameters as to the same person or persons, if it's a five member board, two of them can't be the same people who do not come to the physical meetings. Um, you know, there needs to be some guidance. It's not intended to be just a convenience. Um, it is supposed to be for particular reasons because the open meeting law really wants people to meet transparently in public. Uh, and until there is some special legislation that deals with what we've been working under for the past year, which is virtual participation, virtual meetings, um, you still have to follow a lot of the, the guidelines for the open meeting law. There's in a regular meeting, such as you're holding tonight, there's no requirement for public participation. Most of the uh, public bodies will allow that as you do normally on your agenda. But now if you do uh, adopt remote participation, you have to decide at your discretion, are you going to allow the public to also participate remotely? If you do, you're responsible to also have some kind of technology, as you say, that can accommodate that. Anyone in the physical room has to be able to hear anyone participating remotely and vice versa. As Mr. Gilberto said, it does not have to be an audio meeting at this point. Um, the, the statute is only related to being able you know, audibly, you know, to, to audibly hear everybody. So um, it is coming at you, you know, in a rushed fashion, as Mr. Studo said. And, um, but given that, you know, on June 15th, there will be no more virtual meetings, period. I uh, checked with the Division of Open Government. There is no grace period as there is with the outdoor dining, perhaps. So the uh, ability to meet virtually ends, period. Okay. Thank you. I think maybe what we need to know, um, I'm, I'm, you know, again, I'm only one out of five, but I think what we need to know is the cost of whatever software or programming or platform we can do, we can have to do this. I mean, because I, I do think it's highly likely, even though it hasn't happened yet, that they'll, they'll, other communities do it. So we need that information from you. If, if this is on our agenda, we need to have some firm numbers and an understanding of how to how to achieve this and how do other communities do it and um and also i think we also need to um we need to we, we will probably see some change like this because this is kind of the this is the way people are meeting now this is the way people are having hearings now and public hearings and things like that so we, we really also need to have a discussion as a board for those guidelines not just vote it, but talk about it ahead of time. But that's my opinion. So do we have a vote or do we want to table the vote for the moment? Mr. Studo? I have one other comment. I, I like to piggyback. <laughs> I mean, I mentioned it before, but I'd like to piggyback on something uh, Ms. Stat said, that I think that if we adopt it, we should not do it unless the public can do it too. 
I mean, us deciding that, you know, the, the boards of North Reading get to, you know, sit up on their pedestal and decide whether or not out of convenience, they want to go to a, uh, excuse me, sorry, not convenience, but want to go to, you know, the meeting remotely. I think that I, I will, I will never, uh, even if we have the technology for us, I will never be in favor of it unless the public also, we have the technology for them. I don't think that's fair. You know, I don't think it's fair that I, it can be convenient for me, but not my neighbor who also has three young kids. So um, I think that unless we do it for the public, it's selfish. Thank you, Mr. Studo. We, we, we don't have public comment. However, I recognize that we, we're joined by the chair. We already had public comment. No, we're joined by the chair of our school committee, Mr. Buckley, who's got his hand raised. So please give us your thoughts. Hi, Madam Chair. And welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can you wait? Can you, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so I, I just on the specific topic, I don't know if it's if it's ripe to be voted on yet. So I hear you on all the technology issues. I just have a more broader comment. And so I would love to see us break down barriers and allow the public to be able to attend meetings. Um, I know from the school committee perspective, it's been nice that a lot of, you know, a lot of people that come to our oh, meeting yeah. are parents that have young children that are able to come and attend that way. And I would also say that on my committee, there's at least a couple of us that travel sometimes. And I think it's important to hear from everybody on, on issues. And so like, if I have a member of my committee that is traveling and that is out of town, it would be nice to be able to have them participate if it's, av if it's available. And so I'm not saying that it's something that can be voted on today, but personally, I would like to see this allowed in the future as an option, there might be limits on that, maybe even if it, only if it's out of town, not sitting at home. But we have had members of our committee that have not been able to attend because they've been out of town for work. And it would have been nice to have their perspective on things in the past. So personally, I would love to see this, you know, available in the future. And I would love to see it expanded for the members of the public as well. Just like tonight, I'm gonna have to leave you guys soon because I have a, another work meeting, but it was nice to be able to participate and you know, share my views if you guys were in person and, you know, I could have watched it, nor cam and been yelling at the screen as loud as I wanted, but none, nobody would have heard me. And so I, I would love it to be able to be available in the future. It might not be ripe now, but I think we should all work towards that. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Uh, Ms. Uh, Clark said. Yes. Um, one thing just to keep in mind too, that, you know, unlike the virtual meeting setting, if, if you had um, technical difficulties and you could not be seen uh, or heard, it could affect the meeting. The meeting might have to be postponed, you know, especially a public mm -hmm. hearing, it would have to be postponed. Under remote participation, if there are technical difficulties, this meeting can still go on because a quorum of the public body is physically in a room. Now, that being said, you may be giving a false sense of security or participation to people at home who think, well, I can still join this meeting and participate in the meeting while I'm at home. But if there are technical difficulties for them in viewing or hearing the board on a matter that they have particular interest, they have stayed home assuming that they will be able to hear what's going on and may be able to voice their opinions during the, the discussion. And should they be disconnected, now they don't even know what's going on. They're, okay. they're you know, and they're not in the meeting room. They're not, they're in their pajamas at home because <laughs> that's where they were watching this. So there are a lot of considerations to be taken. You know, I don't want anyone to have that false sense of security that the meeting is going to end if the communication does because the meeting is the three or the quorum that is physically in the room, mm -hmm. whether or not it is a board member who is participating remotely or a member of the public who has joined the meeting to hear what's going on and, mm -hmm. and you know, make their comments known to the board before a vote that matters to them. Okay. So that's another consideration to just, just know, you know, it, it is important to know everything um, 
you know, and, and certainly once the meetings open up on June 15th, the public would have to have the right to come to the physical meeting room. So if they know they have to go to the room to hear what's going on, they know that that's the way it is. But, you know, I just want you to be sure that you realize, you know, the pitfalls, the potential pitfalls with this too. You know, like Mr. Studo has said, you know, maybe we need to know more and set up some parameters and make sure that the public is aware that if they're just being a, a passive uh, observant of the proceedings of the board or any public body, that's fine to stay home just as they did with virtual meetings. But if they have a vested interest, they really should be at the physical meeting room of that public body. Okay, thank you. Madam Clerk, um, I, I think also we need to, to obviously being taken up by the legislature. So there may be some modifications. I was quite surprised to see it on the agenda, but there may be some modifications to the law as it currently exists because we've had a whole over a year now of meeting like this. So that there may be some you know, types some monumental changes to open meeting law based on us meeting on this platform. So that I was surprised to see it because there's so much that goes into it besides just voting to allow it. But um, but I was hoping that with it on the agenda, we would have a plan to comply with the law as it currently exists. Um, and I, I do remember it coming up previously and I don't know how many years ago that was, but I don't think we could afford to change it back then either. So we would need a financial, we need to consider the financial implications too. Um, unless it's something as big that the legislature is gonna change it to something as basic as Zoom, allowing it some hybrid of this or WebEx or the other programs that are out there. Mr. O'Leary. Oh, I mean, um, Mr. <laughs> I'm looking at Mr. Gilberto, but oh, Mr. O'Leary, is there anything else you have to comment? No, I, I, I won't again, go to you, Mr. Gilberto. Okay, I, uh, I, I'm strongly in favor of, uh, uh, of accommodating whatever is going to be here. Uh, I think it's it's time to move forward, and I think this year has given us an opportunity to, to see how it can work. And again, I recognize all the, the pitfalls and all the uh, challenges that go along with it, but we need to come, up, come along with the times and, and be prepared to uh, move forward and allow for um, this type of a platform and public participation. I, so, so I don't disagree. There might be a little bit premature to vote on it this evening, but I think we should uh, be giving the administration some direction to look into, you know, how can it be implemented? Um, and again, what the costs are going to be. And again, we have, um, you know, money that's being sent to us, you know, through the state, from the federal government, um, to me should be spent on things such as this, which are one-time expenditures, and this would be a major investment um, for the future. And I think it's something we should consider strongly. Um, so again, I, I agree with uh, with most everybody here that it's um, th there's some challenges, but I still think it's necessary and something we should be looking forward to in, the sh in short order, not, not in the distance. So thank you. Okay, Mr. Gilberto. I just wanted to say thank you for the feedback. We certainly will take this information and, uh, and consider the comments and we'll monitor things with the legislature over the next few weeks and um, we'll see where it takes us for future discussion. Okay. Thank so you. I think probably we're all in agreement that we're, we're, we won't, we will not take a vote on this this evening. We'll wait to hear a course of action of plan updates, as well as a cost associated with this, how, how it can happen. Is that, is that, why don't we just go, yeah. Ms. Gonzalez, are you in agreement with that? Yeah, I think Ms. it's a little premature. Mr. Studo, are you in agreement yeah. with I, that? I just want one clarification, Crutch, because I read it, but when, when, uh, when clerk stat says it, that's when I believe it, not what I read. Um, we, no matter how we vote in the future, let's say like in, you know, let's say we get the technology and we can do it though, for the purposes you said, three people are still gonna have to be in that room based on how it reads now. Meaning there's no that, you know, to Mr. Buckley's point, I don't, like he's a five member board, but if three are traveling, they can't have the meeting. That is correct. Okay. Well, we can't have it now quorum. anyway, if it's not with the quorum, but the it's quorum three, is, in the room. three is us and them, but it's not the bigger boards. The bigger boards need a quorum is one more than half. 
Right. So, and and that quorum has to be in the room and a person who if if it is the chair of the, the public body who is traveling, another person has to be designated chair and in the re meeting room, in the physical room. And as you're talking about the technology aspect too, I mean, you have to keep in mind that you're going to have to address the various meeting rooms that are used throughout the town to accommodate this. You know, I mean, it's not going to be just room 14. So it is, it is a lot to consider. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Trudeau, so you're, I think you said it, but you, I was trying to pull the, my colleagues to, to, to wait till we have more information from yes. you. Okay. Mr. O'Leary, you said that, is that just nodding yes? And Mr. Walner? Yes, I agree. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next order of business. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We're going to move on to review and discuss the June town meeting warrant articles vote recommendations and then we'll talk about the warrant article assignments so um mr gilberto i think we we all received a copy of the um the meeting warrant hopefully in the mail i got mine and um hopefully everyone else got theirs and i think we have up to this date i don't know if there are any that you specifically want want um us to take another look at right now, Mr. Gilberto. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, so beginning on page five of the meeting packet, there are a series of motions. They start under number seven, vote warrant article recommendations. These are articles for which we do not anticipate any action uh, being taken at town meeting or for which um, we know um, that there is, you know, it's mostly uh, articles we know that we're going to be planning to pass over. So the board is okay, so well. Why don't we why don't we go one by one, Mr. Sure. Gilberto? So our, article one is a fiscal year 2021 budget amendment. We we voted previously to recommend a town meeting. M Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Through you. So uh, there's only a handful, and uh, if um, okay. if Tenzo wants to read the, uh, the the motions, then I'll maybe just focus it to the ones that are in that status rather than have to go through every article. Sure. That'd be great. Mr. Studo? Sure. Oh, so Mike, just go literally through the motions on, on my yep. packet. Okay. So um, Article 6, FY 2021, transfer funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust. Uh, do you want me to read the motion, the whole thing? Through you, Madam uh, Chair. That'd be my recommendation, yep. Okay. And I've highlighted in bold the, the recommendation. Uh, yep. Madam Chair, I move to recommend passing over Article 6, FY 2021, transfer funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. And um, further discussion on that recommendation. And Mr. Gilbert, I believe we heard from the finance director that we typically fund this in October town meeting? Uh, we typically um, fund it as part of the June um, budget approval. So we have an article in June each year for that upcoming um, fiscal year. Uh, sorry, I strike that. We, we do it in June. This would be for the current fiscal year. We already did this current fiscal year last June. So okay. uh, it, it'll be a further one you're referring to that I'll speak to that we do in October. Okay, all right, I'm mixing the two up then. And, and does anyone have any questions on? There, there, Madam Chair, three, there is a similar article. I think it's article 18 that will be for fiscal year 2022, which we are, we've already recommended. Okay, all right. Any further discussion? No questions, hearing none. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Emmanuel Pelly is I. So we all Article Six, a new recommendation is to pass over. Mr. Studo. Okay. Um, Article Eight, FY 2021, appropriate funds to participating funding arrangement fund. Madam Chair, I move to recommend passing over Article Eight, appropriate funds to participating funding arrangement fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion, questions? 
Mr. Gilberto on the recommendation. Madam Chair, thank you. So we traditionally make this transfer in October um, after the conclusion of the fiscal year from free cash and we did so last October. Okay, any qu other questions? Hearing, seeing none. Mr. On Mr. Studo's motion, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And Manny Pelley is aye. So now Article 8, we're passing over. Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Studo, I'm going to ask that we hold off on Article 20 on that motion. If we could move to Article 22. Okay. Uh, Article 22, FY 2022, appropriate funds to participating funding arrangement fund. Madam Chair, I move to recommend passing over Article 22, appropriate state funds to participating funding arrangement fund. Second. A motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Gilberto on the rec new recommendation. Madam Chair, through you. Uh, this uh, this would be a, an appropriation of funding for the PFA for fiscal year 2022, which we will do at the October town meeting okay. from available free cash certified as of June 30th, 2021. All right. You just yeah. got to fix the typo though, Mike, because it yeah. says I corrected it while I was reading it, but it says 21. Yeah. Is it Article 22 or 21? Which one is it? It's 22. In the warrant, right. 22. I'm looking yeah. at the warrant, and it's 22 in the actual warrant. I think it's just a typo on this, Mr. O'Leary. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you want to? Well, I, I corrected he, it as I was he speaking. Corrected in the motion. That is that's correct. Right. Article you should say Article 22, and that's what it says. So, yep. okay. So the motion is to pass over Article 22, appropriate money to participating funding arrangement fund, and motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further question? Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manny Pelli is aye. So Article 22 will be passed, recommend pass over. Madam Chair, through you, I'm going to recommend that we hold off on Article 28 uh, while we continue our review of those revolving accounts. The remaining articles, the board may wish the benefit of some of the presentation in the Warren article hearing prior to taking action. So um, through you, Madam Chair, we may wish to just come back to those at a later point sure. during the hearing. Sure, that would be great. And then if I could just go over um, that uh, our water, warrant article assignments and if there's any any one warrant, warrant article or two or three or four or five or six or seven that you feel strongly to my colleagues that you would like to present, you know, as you know, we all have the opportunity to go and speak speak to participants at the town meeting anyway but if there's anything you feel very very strongly about please raise your hand but here's how i broke it down articles i'll do articles one through seven and i'll and mr o'leary articles eight through 14. mr walner articles 15 through 20. Mrs. Gonzalez, articles 21 through 27. And Mr. Studo, articles 28 through 32. Right, I get the fun ones. No, look, did you see 21? <laughs> oh. And again, we we all have the opportunity and we all have, and we, we all actually did the past couple of meetings stand up on some of these articles if we feel very strongly. So I just want to give my colleagues a couple of minutes to just quickly look through those and I'm happy to shift them around and if, if need be. Madam Chair, I'm, I'm sorry, I was going through my warrant. I only got Mrs. Gonzalez and Mr. Sudo's recommendations, if you wouldn't mind. Oh me. boy, okay. <laughs> I have, um, I was planning to do the first seven, articles yeah. one through seven. Great. Mr. O'Leary, the next seven, articles eight through 14. Mr. Walner, the next six, articles 15 through 20. Thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez, the next seven, articles 21 through 27. Mr. Studo, because he's new at this, articles 28 through 32. And um, every the, single- The remaining five. Says, so, and- 
uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, at the town, because uh, I think we did it last year, there's like a summary that we read, correct, to present? That's or is right. it verbatim, or is this read like verbatim? No, the okay. Warren articles are uh, mailed to the town meet, you know, to the residents and the residents appearing. What is prepared in advance is the particular article name and we present to the town what our recommend and to the moderator what our recommendation is. And then there's debate or deliberation on okay. the article. No, 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 that understood. Yeah. Oh, no, I just didn't know if like, for example, for article 30, if every single lot word is read, like, you know, it's like three and a half pages. I wasn't sure if that's the case. If it is, it is, but. No, it, generally it's just presented in the warrant. Okay. So yeah. I'll, give you a, I'll give you a little break this time. <laughs> Some of those, and I, be, I believe for article 30 and probably for a good uh i believe for so some of these are being presented by um some of these are being presented by uh other other boards and i believe we'll have a we'll more, more than likely have a presentation at that moment in time for that the zoning mm -hmm. articles is typically how it's done and more than likely have a presentation for Article 31. I don't know who's requested that of the moderator, but I'm assuming that some of yours are going to, you know, one of yours is a citizen's petition. So the petitioner would be seeking leave of the moderator to do a presentation. And so that, you know, presents an opportunity in that, in that regard as well. So. And again, zoning bylaws would be the planning commission would be making the motion generally. Okay. All right, and does that work for everybody? That's all set, Mr. Gilberto? Thank you. Okay, that's perfect. All right, now we have a, we actually, oh, Mrs. Herbert's raising her hand. Please, Mrs. Herbert, you're, you're muted. Uh, through you to uh, Barbara Stats, uh, are there additional warrants available in the lobby of town hall? And I ask this because among other things, I don't have a warrant in the mail. Hmm. Maybe it just maybe it maybe my mind got to me earlier than yours. But Ms. Clerk Stats, do you have extra warrant articles? Yes, we do. There were some in town hall, so okay. um, great. You know, Thanks. I did get mine in the mail, you know, timely, but you know that just depends on the postal service and the carriers sometimes. Well, and you know, we we were having our mail held, and it was not in the held mail. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, thank you. It may, might be because it was bulk mailing. I don't know. But yeah, we have them, Abby. If you want to, you know, come down when we're open or give me a call if it's a time when we're not open. Yeah, no, uh, well, we're leaving. We're going back up to Maine tomorrow. So I would like to take it. It's also online. I know the t town administrator has it up on his website. It's on, there's a link to it right on my homepage. Right. right, I'd like right to in the make, middle. I like to make notes in it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right, thank you. And our next order of business is um, a joint meeting with the Community Planning Commission for joint appointments to the Economic Development yes. Committee. Um, and Mr. Gilberto, could you just t tell us for purposes of opening that meeting the members of the community planning commission that are joining us. I do see our chair, Mr. Pierce is and with us. Mr. Hayden, the vice chair is also- uh, Our vice the, chair, Mr. Hayden, yes. Um, and uh, I see the town planner. I, I, I'm not quickly seeing other folks on here. Danielle, if you could just help me if I'm just- Why don't I just turn it over to Mr. Pierce and Mr. Sure. Pierce, who's, who of your membership is joining? If you could just state uh, that for the record. Thank you. So far, it's just myself and Chris, so far as I see, and of course, uh, Danielle. Mr. Johnston uh, is here as well. Yes, I'm here as well, Jeremiah Johnston. Okay. Oh, there you are. Welcome. Okay. Next just screen. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so there's myself, Mr. Hayden, Mr. Johnson, <laughs> and Danielle. Okay. Are we so we good to proceed? I just yeah. have a quick question. I say, uh, I don't see Mr. Clancy Maine's 
name, name in the motion, but I see his uh, citizens activity form. I can speak to that. Um, okay. Mr. O'Leary, uh, I, I spoke to uh, Clancy. He actually ended up moving to Derry, New Hampshire instead of North Reading, so he withdrew from consideration. Okay. Right. Okay. Sure. So <laughs> if we can gonna... call, I guess we're joint, joint meeting is called to order with the members present, which we do have a quorum of the CPC. So on the motion, Mr. Studo. Um, sure. So I'd like to add as well that um, these um, these recommendations are, are, have done. It, uh, we're both in agreement with uh, Mr. Hayden from the CPC. Uh, it will be for three full members and one associate member. I did not have a chance to speak to Miss uh, Nancy Ludwig. But uh, me and Mr. Hayden are in agreement on the three full member open, uh, openings that we're recommending, plus the one associate member. So, and Mr. Just... Studo, let's have the motion, okay. and we're, we're we'll deliver, discuss the motion if it gets a second. So, let's hear okay. the motion first, and then if we get a second, then we can proceed with uh, and, oh. and let Mr. Mr. Pierce speak as well on the motion. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to jointly appoint the following individuals as members of the Economic Development Committee for the terms stated below. These are the full members, Matthew Dumont, Lisa Egan, and Maria Fercero, or Fercero, if I'm pronouncing it, you know, for my, sure. my native Italian. I just, you know, I gave both <laughs> versions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Okay, yes, uh, to, on the planning board, we agree with those uh, with those appointments. Uh, Mr. Strudo's motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Strudo's motion, seconded by Mrs. Gonzalez. And Mr. Strudo, we have heard from you as our liaison that these are all recommendations, and Mr. Pierce has just confirmed that. And it is there any other question? Are there any other? <laughs> Are there any other questions before I got the word question out? I saw your hand raised. All right, so Mr. Gilberto, we'll, we'll, we'll go with Mr. Gilberto. Just to clarify, these would be terms all to expire May 24th, 2024, Mr. Tudo, is that correct? Yes, thank you. I didn't read okay. that. All right. Mr. Walner had his hand raised. Do you have yeah, a question? Quick, quick question, question, comment. Uh, just a question, Lisa Egan. Uh, I see her as, as residents in Reading, not North Reading. Is that is that still okay? I, yes, uh, it is not a, a residency requirement. Is not for the EDC to be full member. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Are we placing the other people's names in nomination also as we normally would? I have another motion for that. The next one, Mr. O'Leary, for the associate. But generally, I think the practice or I think oh, the policy calls for all of them to be nominated. Oh, then, I understand. Okay. Yeah. My apologies. You want me to amend my motion, uh, Chair? Well, the motion that you made was seconded, so it would have to be withdrawn. Um, it, it, it has to be withdrawn if or voted on, so... Did you want to okay. with, withdraw. withdraw your motion? Please. And withdraw the second to the motion so that we can, okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Hayden, I think wants to give us some information as well. So Mr. Hayden. Yes, um, Caitlin Sullivan at this time is, does not have enough uh, personal time to be a full member. She doesn't think she does. Uh, so she really wanted to be, uh, involved and she wanted to get involved as an associate member so if she had to miss a meeting or she was late to a meeting it wouldn't affect the vote or any other information but she would be able to uh still join and uh hopefully later on when her, her time permits she would be happy to be elevated to a, a full member okay that's great madam okay chair. thank you mr hayden madam chair Yes, Mr. Gilberto. I think I may be a source of some of the confusion. Um, <laughs> Mr. Studo, it reads, All I right. think, jointly appointed. We'll let you fall on the sword for this one, because I'm totally <laughs> confused at this point. It should read, I move to nominate the following individuals, not I move to jointly appoint. And then when you call the roll, Madam Chair, the members will all call 
three names for the three terms. Thank you. So, Mr. Studo, it should, should be Mr. Chair, I move to nominate the following individuals. Okay. I apologize for that. Try, let's try this again. Um, <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to nominate the following individuals as members of the Economic Development Committee for the terms stated below. Three openings, all expiring May 24, 2024. Matthew Dumont, Lisa Egan, Maria Frachero, Caitlin Sullivan, Nancy Ludwig. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. Walner. Are there any other nominations? So hearing none, we will close the nominations for this, I think, and then we'll hear for the recommendation once more. Mr. Pierce. Yeah, recommendation for the three, the three members um, they'd be um, matt dumont maria and lisa those those three matt dumont lisa yes. egan yes and and maria uh for, for where is for Shiro. Yeah. For Shiro. Oh, i was gonna i was gonna let vincenzo do say that for me <laughs> okay all right so as the liaison has already concurred with that. Okay, so now we'll call the roll. I'll call the roll of the, the select board. Mr. O'Leary. Matthew Dumont, Lisa Egan, Maria Fraschero. Mr. Walner. Matthew Dumont, Lisa Egan, Maria Fraschero. Mr. Studo. Matthew Dumont, Lisa Egan, Maria Fraschero. Mrs. Gonzalez. Matthew Dumont, Lisa Egan, Maria Fraschero. And Manny Pelli is Matthew Dumont, Lisa Egan, and Maria Fraschero. And Mr. Pierce? Yes, I'll call the roll for, um, and I will um, I'll start with Jeremiah Johnson. Yeah, Matthew Dumont, Lisa Egan, Maria Fraschero. And Chris Hayden? Matthew Dumont, Lisa Egan, Maria Fraschero. And I also say Matt Dumont, Lisa Egan, and Maria Fichero. Okay, so they are welcome to board. Now we have another motion, Mr. Studo, for associate I, members. I do. I just have one question for uh, uh, the town administrator. Do I omit the three names of the full voting members that just uh, got voted in, or do I read it as, as it is? We just appointed them so they can't serve okay. as associates. They're That's already right. appointed as a member. Yeah. And Mr. Mr. So it leaves us with small slim choices here. <laughs> oh, well. But we can't we can't go back and then say now we're gonna now appoint them as an associate. They're already appointed. Oh, I figured that, but I'm making making no assumptions tonight with the way these are worded. So I just have to repeat it again. <laughs> so, uh, good choice. So, so how many do we have left? And how many associate positions are available? There's unlimited positions. There's two, but there's, I won't put the recommend the cop before the horse. I'll give my recommendation after I read the motion. Uh, <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to uh, nominate the following individuals as associate members of the Economic Development Committee for the term stated below. Caitlin Sullivan, Nancy Ludwig through May 24, 2024. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Discussion, Mr. Pierce, your recommendation? Uh, our, recommend, our recommendations um, would be the same. I think we I think we were gonna recommend both of them if I correct. I would like to defer to Chris on that. Chris Hayden, is, did we agree okay. on two? Sure, Mr. Hayden. We, neither uh, Mr. Studo or myself was able to um, interview um, the second person, I just lost her name. Nancy. Nancy, Nancy, Nancy yes. Yeah. Um, so let me share her, 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 uh, her write up was, was impressive, but, uh, you know, do we want to nominate or appoint on that? It's to, up to, to the boards. Uh, Madam Chair, to, to some of us, uh, Nancy Ludwig is a longtime member of the community, been active in the community for a number of years and would be an asset to any board committee or commission that she wishes to serve on. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studi, your recommendation as um, a liaison? My recommendation is Caitlin Sullivan and the reason not yet for Nancy Ludwig, I want to make sure that she put it in a while ago and just like um, Mr. Clancy Mann, I just wanna make sure that she's still in it. And my understanding was that whoever did speak to her at some point, she did have some questions and, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll, I'll try her again. I just, I, I, I did call last Wednesday. So I just want to, I just want to make sure that we're not appointing some, it's been so long. I want to make sure they still want to do it and they don't find out tomorrow that, Hey, by the way, you're on the economic development committee. So, so for right now, I would just recommend Caitlin Sullivan just because neither I or Mr. Hayden were able to speak to her. Um, well, Madam we Chair. have the recommendation, so we'll take a, let's take a vote. Madam Chair, could I, could I oh, have Ms. a Pierce, I'm sorry. I have a, I have a question for, uh, for Mr. Gilberto. If we were to uh, uh, forward the nominations of both of these people and one of them wanted to opt out, what is the, uh, is there a process for them opting out? In other words, uh, if, if we find out that uh, Nancy Lugwood did want to be, for some reason, just didn't get back and does want to be on it, and we appoint her as an associate. Can an associate basically just opt out? She would I mean, probably I, say, no, thank you, and not sign the paperwork. And yeah, then we would I, know that we'd have another person. That well, would then have another the opportunity to give everybody a fair chance at this. And, and, yeah. and uh, I think it probably would be a good idea, as, as Steve said. So. Because she signed the paper that that's what she's interested in exactly. doing. So yes. So that would be my suggestion. Okay. All right. So well, let's Madam uh, Chair, take, um, clerk if, stats. If you do appoint her, she really would need to forward a letter of resignation. As an associate member? Yes. It's still an appointment. Okay. But if she doesn't get sworn in, what happens? But it's it... an appointment that you you this board made this public body. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can make a decision then. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, well, that was part of my question, if I may, Madam Chair, is to find out exactly, you know, if, if we were putting a uh, uh, some kind of if we were putting pressure on it to do something, or if we should, or if we just give her an opportunity. But it sounds sure, like, of course, according to the town clerk here, it sounds to me like we might be might be putting her in a position she may not want sure. to be in. Okay, so, so you want to you want us at least on the nomination for associate. You want us to have give you the opportunity to at least connect with her. Yeah, so right. I think while we'll okay. go with Mr. Studio's re recommendation of Caitlin Sullivan. Okay, thank you, Mr. Okay. Pierce. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. on Mr. Studio's motion, seconded by Mr. O'Leary, I'm going to call the roll of the Just select. Just one other question: So are we intending on if she's interested? Are we going to have to have an, we're going to have to have another joint meeting? Uh, in order to well that would be point. that would be true mr mr o'leary but it might be more uh proper than uh putting her in the position without her being without her actually responding to say yes i'd be i'd rather come back and i'd be willing to come back and re revisit the board if that if she's still interested okay just as long as the planning commission's aware that we might just need another joint meeting to, to facilitate it. Again, I don't want it to drag on either if she's interested. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. We good? Uh, all set, Mr. O'Leary? All set. All right. I'm going to call the roll of the of the select board. Mr. O'Leary, kicking uh, it off. Sullivan. Caitlin Sullivan. Mr. Walner. Caitlin Sullivan. Mr. Studo. Caitlin Sullivan. Mrs. Gonzalez. Caitlin Sullivan. Manu Pelius, Caitlin Sullivan. Mr. Pierce. Yes, uh, Jeremiah Johnson. Uh, Caitlin Sullivan. Yeah, Chris Hayden. Caitlin Sullivan. And myself is Caitlin Sullivan. Okay, thank you. So just let us know when you've reached out to Nancy. We'd be, sure. She was. Yeah. And if she still has an interest, we'll bring her in. Yep. Great. And what That's I'll do wonderful. is I will, um, I'll try her, I'll try her again tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Studo. Okay, thank you. Our next order of business is an 8 p.m. June 5th, 2021 town meeting warrant article informational hearing. So we have, um, I believe several members of the public joining us. 
and so we're going to uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Gilberto, is there a meeting notice that should be read for the there record? On page 27 of the packet, yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> okay, this is the Town of North Reading Notice of Virtual Informational Hearing. The North Reading Select Board does hereby notify the residents of the town of North Reading that a virtual hearing on the following articles contained in the June 5th, 2021 town meeting warrant article will be held Monday, May 24th, 2021, 8 p.m. with the hearing access via the internet Zoom link, via telephone with the telephone numbers provided. The hearing, this hearing will represent an opportunity for residents to learn more about the articles on the town meeting warrant to ask questions and to engage in discussion in advance of the June town meeting. A listing of warrant articles is as follows. Article one, fiscal year 2021 budget amendment. Article two, fund fiscal year 2021 snow and ice deficit. Article three, fiscal year 2021, appropriate funds to capital improvement stabilization fund. Article four, fiscal year 2021 transfer funds to water stabilization fund. Article five, appro fiscal year 2021 appropriate money to stabilization fund. Fis Article six, fiscal year 2021, transfer funds to other post-employment benefits, liability trust fund. Article seven, fiscal year 2021, transfer funds to solid waste stabilization fund. Article 8, Fiscal Year 2021 Appropriate Funds to Participating Funding Arrangement Fund. Article 9, Select Town Officers. Article 10, Hear and Act on Reports of Town Officers and Committees. Article 11, Authorize Director of Public Works to Accept Easements. Article 12, Authorize Treasurer to Enter into Compensating Balance Agreements. Article 13, Authorize Chapter 90 Highway Construction Funds. Article 14, prior year bills. Article 15, home rule petition, establish cell tower receipts reserve fund. Article 16, fiscal year 2021 operating budget. Article 17, fund retirement obligations. Article 18, appropriate funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Article 19, transfer funds to school district reserve fund for unanticipated unbudgeted costs for special education out of district tuition or transportation. Article 20, rescind authorization to borrow. Article 21, fiscal year 2022 capital expenditures. Article 22, appropriate money to participating funding arrangement fund. Article 23, fund town building repairs. Article 24, appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. Article 25, appropriate money for legal expenses, 20 Elm Street litigation. Article 26, amend code of North Reading, chapter 66, finance, add school rental revolving fund. Article 27, establish dollar amount for school rental revolving fund. Article 28, amend dollar amounts for various revolving funds. Article 29, amend code, zoning bylaws, add section, small cell wireless facilities. Article 30, amend code, zoning amendment, addition of senior housing overlay, zoning district and related amendments. Article 31, citizens petition, amend zoning bylaw, map 18, parcels 13, 14, and 15. Article 32, amend code, zoning bylaws, section 230, zoning map 4, 12, and 14, Concord Street. This hearing is held pursuant to sections 18 through 25 of chapter 30A of the Massachusetts General Laws, the open meeting law. Any interested citizen is welcome to virtually attend and participate in this hearing. Notice of explanation. It is the unanimous desire of the North Reading Select Board to encourage and allow the highest level of public participation in making decisions that affect North Reading. This warrant article hearing is intended to represent an opportunity for extended virtual discussion in advance of town meeting. We sincerely hope that you will join us for this hearing on June 5th, 2021 at 8 p.m. signed by the members of the select board. So we will 
turn to Mr. Gilberto, what I think would be a good idea as we proceeded previously to just review, even if we've, we've voted to pass all of these specific, specific articles, if we could just do a quick summary of each and that way we can invite if anyone has any questions on those. Um, Madam Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Gilberto. Through you, um, as you know, we make available in the printed warrant the opportunity to submit questions via email in advance Right. And we did receive a, uh, a series of questions from, um, I believe, a resident um, yesterday or early today that the finance director has gone through and, and, and answered. Um, the questions that would appear to largely come from the financial reports that are at the beginning of the warrant. So um, we, I, I thought I saw the individual here at the hearing, but I don't, I don't see his name here now. Um, so I don't know whether you want us to go through the responses now or, or maybe wait to later. Um, there were a number of questions, probably uh, 10 or so questions, and the finance director does have responses for nearly all of them. And the, you're saying they're related to the first articles, article one or? No, they're related to the financial reports that, that precede the uh, warrant itself. Okay, so perhaps if we if we go through each article, we can just ask if there's any question and move it, move along if there aren't, even if there if we voted to pass over, I think that might be the best way to handle it. And then when we arrive at those particular warrant articles that you you received question, you can raise your hand and then we can let that let the answer. I think we should address the questions and answer the questions, however the finance director answered them. Okay. Okay. So, um, so to the finance director through you, Madam Chair, do you think you could sort of weigh in with the responses as we go article by article? Uh, to Ms. Ms. Rourke. Through you, Madam Chair, to the town administrator. Yes, I can do that. Uh, some mic are addressed as well through our presentation. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. And Madam Chair, I'm going to share my screen. I do a PowerPoint presentation Perfect. to guide us through this. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, through you. Is the presentation showing up as a whole screen or is it in that funny presenter view? It, it's, the, it's, you can see the whole screen. Sure. Okay, can everyone see that okay? Yes. I just uh, will note for the record, the town meeting is Saturday, June 5th at nine o'clock AM, 189 Park Street scheduled to take place on Arthur Kenny Turf Field. The next slide, a summary of our available balances for accounts that are um, frequently part of our financial planning process for town meeting. I'm not going to read the dollar amounts, but you do see them up there on the screen. Moving right into uh, article one, our fiscal year 2021 budget amendment. We do anticipate that a vote will uh, to increase the water enterprise budget to reflect increased purchase of water from the town of Andover will be a recommended adjustment and the funding source would be water department revenue associated with the additional sale of, uh, of water. Um, so um, that's the one budget amendment item that we are aware of at this point in time that was identified after the meeting on May 11. Uh, okay. Do we, do we, <laughs> all right. I was gonna ask you if you could just, I, I can still see, but if, if any participant has any question, if you could raise your hand or put something in the chat room, but I'm seeing none, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to try to expand my, my screen so I can also see. Thank you. Um, for you. Okay. Uh, moving right along to Article 2. Snow and ice deficit would appropriate funding for expenses that exceeded the fiscal year 21 budget for snow and ice uh, removal. And it's estimated to be a $47,155 appropriation funded with free cash. So questions with regard to article two. I see none. Seeing none. And we will select what's recommended that. Okay. Madam Chair, through you article three, transfer of funds to the capital improvement stabilization fund. The balance is currently $820,000. $820,853. 
The article proposes to add $1,341,000 in free cash to the fund, which will then subsequently be um, appropriated into the omnibus operating budget later on in the warrant. Any questions? That's recommended by the select board. So I see none and I see nothing in the chat room, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, Article 4, transfer of funds to the Water Stabilization Fund. We anticipate recommending a transfer of $14,665, which are the Water Department Enterprise retained earnings, which would be transferred into the fund. Questions on Article 4? None. Seeing none. No chat, no questions. And that's recommended by the Select Board. Madam Chair, through you, Article 5, transferring funds to the Stabilization Fund. Current balance is $3,630,453. We're um, anticipating to recommend the balance of free cash after factoring other uses at town meeting um, into this fund um, for um, uh, increasing the amount available. And we'll have a finalized number for that uh, the morning at town meeting. Um, and through the finance director, I believe the estimated amount um, for that transfer is somewhere around $500,000. Again, that's an estimated amount that'll be finalized the morning at town meeting. Okay. And which is why our recommendation is going to be at the town meeting. Questions on article five? I see none, nothing in the chat room. Madam Chair, through you, Article 6, transferring funds to the other post employment benefit liability trust fund. The balance is $2,605,708. We're recommending passing over the bar, the, 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 this article. The appropriation of funding into the fund is proposed as part of the FY22 budget plan under Article 18. Any questions? Seeing none. We're passing that over, obviously. Okay. Right. Article seven, transferring funds to the Solid Waste Stabilization Fund. Current balance is $202,239. And as is the case annually, we expect to be recommending whatever the available um, funding projected to be left in that appropriation, the morning of town meeting, to be transferred into the Stabilization Fund. And I will just note, as we've discussed in previous meetings, we are looking at the, the funding mechanism um, for the solid waste program. We've committed to look at that over the course of fiscal year 22. And if we identify that there are any adjustments that need to be made, we would uh, recommend those adjustments to take place in fiscal year 2023. I can tell you that the finance director, the public works director and I did speak with town council and you know, got their feedback and they did not you know, feel that there was anything patently incorrect in the way we're, we're establishing the fee, but did agree that reviewing the fee a little bit more closely in advance of an upcoming budget would be a, a best practice that they would they would recommend in summary. And we intend to do that as we stated a few meetings ago. Okay. Questions? I don't see any. Mm -hmm. and, and were any of these Initial ones, the, the ones that the finance director was specifically responding to? You that had mentioned the, they were in the beginning, Mr. Gilberto. The, 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 com the question seemed to be out of the financial summary. So um, I, don't, I actually can't see what I'm holding up because I've got this PowerPoint presentation up. Okay. But um, the earlier pages in the warrant, pages 9 and 10, have a revenue forecast and then they have uh, appropriation projection in them. And it just seemed like the questions were, were born out of that, which is not a warrant article, it's a report to, to the town. Okay, all right. So I think at any point, if the, if the warrant article seems to appear relevant to the questions then just jump in or, have, or Ms. Rourke can jump in. Sure. All right, so we're moving on to article eight. Thank you, Madam Chair, appropriating funding to the participation Participating Funding Arrangement Fund. We're recommending passing over the article that transfer is traditionally made in October and for fiscal year 2021 was made in October of 2020. We anticipate recommending that transfer being made in October of this year for fiscal year 2022. Okay. Any questions? I see none. No chat. Passing over anyway. Article nine. 
Madam Chair, through you, selection of town officers. This is a routine article, which the select board uh, is a, obtains the authority to select officers uh, for which no um, no bylaw or state law designates um, authority for appointment. It's a, it's a routine article. Article 10. Madam Chair, through you, this is to hear the reports of officers and committees, also a routine article. Article 11, Mr. Roberto. Similarly routine, authorizing the DPW director to accept easements for water mains, drainage, and other public purposes. And Article 12. I'm Another just going to watch for hands raised or chat room, Mr. Gilberto. So. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is, is the main screen going? Are you, I can't tell what everyone's seeing. Are you seeing? It's, see, it's, it's right now on current cash reserve. Okay, I, I apologize. <laughs> so let me just uh, move that through. Are we on 12 or 13, Madam Chair? I apologize. Now we're on Article 12. Great. So this would authorize the Treasurer to enter into compensating balancing agreements. It is a, a routine article allowing the treasurer to enter into agreements where a portion of the interest earnings are retained by the bank in exchange for the services. Again, a routine article. Okay, article 13. Authorizes chapter 90 construction, which uh, we anticipate receiving $516,699 from the state, which is our share of $200 million being distributed statewide. Article 14. Prior year bills, we do have a few bills that we are projecting to be paid, uh, one for our office equipment and maintenance, uh, repairs and maintenance in the amount of $216.43, one for volunteer recognition in the amount of $210, one for custodial services in the amount of $277.71, one for code enforcement certification in the amount of $287.24, and a legal subscription in the amount of $245.42. Through you, Madam Chair, to the Finance Director, the, uh, this would be an authorization. The funding would come out of these departments' fiscal year 2021 operating budgets, correct? Okay. That is correct. Thank you. Okay. And that, that tends to evolve as we get closer to the meeting. That's why your recommendation has not yet been made, and we'll ask you to make a recommendation on the morning town meeting. Okay. Mr. Gilberto, I would just say to keep moving forward, and if okay. I see a hand raised, I'll I'll let you know. Or if I see Thank anyone you. make any comment in the chat room, and then perhaps Thanks. if at the end of these you can explain the questions and the answers, sure. I think that would be a good idea. Sounds good. I'll keep moving. Article 15: A Home Rule Petition to Establish a Cell Tower Receipts Reserve Fund. The town has leased space at municipal properties, including water towers at the DP and at the DPW garage with the prior approval of town meeting. State Department of Revenue has recommended that we establish a receipts reserve fund to set aside this revenue associated with the leases for future expenditure. Town Council has recommended us language for a special act which would be required to establish such a fund, such a fund and that was included in the warrant. Um, the main motion that we will recommend will clarify that the lease maybe a space on water towers or any other facility approved by town meeting. That's something that we caught. Um, there's a, the authorization is focused on, town, on, on the town's water towers, but as some of the board members know, we have a facility that's located at the DPW garage off of Chestnut Street. And we wanna be clear that that also would be included. Madam Chair, through you to article 16. The fiscal year 2022 operating budget, uh, for those who have not seen it, uh, there was a pretty extensive presentation made over the past two meetings by the finance director. Um, the budget is uh, voted as two motions, one with available funds and one for debt service with a grand total of $80,055.602. Broken down um, roughly $31 million for general government, roughly $35 million for education, uh, including a vocational technical school assessment, just over $6 million in uh, various enterprises and debt service of 7.76. $9 million. So, Mr. Gilberto, I would imagine that this subject of the questioning probably pertains to this article. It does. Most of it, so, I think, is related to it, Madam Chair. So I think this might be a good opportunity to do the question asked and the answer provided. Great. Madam Chair, for you to the finance director. Yes. Please, Ms. Rourke. Thank you. It does not pertain to every single department, so I will answer the questions that are being asked. Question number one, 
select board, 18% uh, increase. Um, and that is due to breaking out the position of recording secretary, town administrator. Um, the increase for the town administrator's office is for the uh, restoration and addition of the position for the project manager grant coordinator that was funded in FY20 and cut from FY21 and now being restored for FY22. The salary pool increase is due to contract settlements that can be uh, union contracts, it can be non-union contracts, it can be employment agreements, and it's also for sick and vacation uh, buybacks. We also have included for FY22 the U Services Assistant Director position, as well as the fire department uh, recruit training overtime costs, um, assuming that we will have two retirements within the fire department and those decisions have been, uh, were made uh, several weeks ago. Question number four, how many finance directors are there in town? There is one finance director and one assistant finance director. Uh, question number five, uh, the collect collector's office, collection office, the increase is due to the restoration of a clerical position that was eliminated for FY21. Uh, question number six, information systems. Uh, the increase is driven by upgraded GIS software and support costs, as well as other increased annual support costs that go anywhere between three to 7% annually. And those support costs could be for our financial management systems, to our servers, to backup solutions. There's a whole slew of uh, support costs. Uh, question number seven, community planning. Uh, the increase is driven by the restoration of the $20,000 for EDC expenses. Question number eight, police miscellaneous capital uh, for the purchase and outfitting of two hybrid police cruisers. There were no police cruisers, uh, marked police cruisers uh, purchased in FY21. Question number nine, code enforcement. The increase is driven by the restoration of a part-time uh, electrical inspector position that was cut from FY21's budget due to the vacancy in that position. Question number 10, Department of Public Works increase is driven um, mainly by the small capital of $144,600. Um, which is almost 100,000 over the small capital that was included for FY21. The question number 11 is regarding the sanitation budget. And as we all know, our trash fee has increased and that's due to hauling and disposal costs uh, contractual increase. Question number 12, uh, library increase is due to the costs of uh, subscription services. There's been some added increased uh, cost for online subscription services and things like that. Uh, question number 13 is recreation. And I'm assuming the, the question pertains to, uh, as the town administrator referenced uh, on page nine or 10, where the expenditures are just listed solely. Um, as a general fund expenditure, the subsidy increased substantially, if you all remember, and that's due to the town increasing the subsidy to Parks and Recreation Enterprise Fund for an additional uh, DPW parks position that we're taking on for um, the year so that they can regain their revenues that were lost due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Because if you look at the actual enterprise budget um, for recreation, it's not a 20% increase um, that is noted in this email. Um, and number 14 is school operations, a 5% increase. And that has to do with um, various employment contracts and other expenditure increases and um, additional costs due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That covers uh, the questions in regarding the omnibus uh, warrant article, 
but uh, as the town administrator mentioned, uh, I believe these were driven by that summary page. Okay, thank you, Ms. Roar. Any yeah. other questions of the attendees? I see none, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, Article 17, funding retirement obligations, $200,000 from free cash, 60,000 of which for municipal retirement obligations and 140,000 for public school retirement obligations. Article 18, transfer of funds to other post-employment benefit liability trust fund, propose a transfer in the amount of $300,000 to be funded from raise and appropriate in accordance with our fiscal year 22 financial plan. Article 19, transferring funds to school district reserve fund for unanticipated unbudgeted costs for special education, out of district tuition or transportation. This was a fund that was set up a couple of years ago at town meeting and, and there was a, an initial transfer that was made. The school committee is proposing and requesting a transfer uh, into the funding and we've identified the proposed funding amount of $100,000 for transfer from free cash uh, into this fund for fiscal year 22. Article 20, rescinding authorizations to borrow. They were not anticipated at this time. We'll continue to look at that between now and the June town meeting date. Um, and uh, we'll ask the select board to make a recommendation uh, at that time. Article 21, the fiscal year 22 town capital budget. Um, the there's uh, multiple slides that show all of these projects. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. They are in your warrant, um, which should have arrived at your doorstep. And if uh, you want to look online, it's on the town's website as well. Um, this is a plan that was presented by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee on May 10th and approved by the select board that evening. It's been recommended by the select board, school committee, finance committee, and um, Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Article 22, appropriating money to the, to the PFA. We're recommending passing this over as we anticipate making that funding transfer in um, October from the balance of funds available as of June 30th, 2021. And the board voted earlier this evening to recommend passing over that article. Article 23, funding town building repairs. We have a series of projects that total $50,000 to be funded from free cash at the town hall, the third meeting house and at the Damon Tavern. Madam Chair, through you, Article 24, funding for special counsel legal expenses. We do anticipate passing over this article, but we'll be monitoring the status of the case between now and the June town meeting when we'll ask for the board to vote its recommendation. Similar article, Article 25, appropriating funding for the 20 Elm Street litigation. We are recommending a transfer of $100,000 from free cash and the board has previously voted to recommend the article. Article 26 would amend the code of the town of North Reading, our bylaws to add the school rental revolving fund for surplus property. Um, this would establish a fund um, for um, a rental agreements that were authorized at the June 2020 town meeting. You know, I will say the school committee evaluated proposals to lease the surplus space, but ultimately decided not to pursue the lease of space at this time, although they may revisit it in the future. Regardless, this would be uh, an administrative action to uh, codify the previous approval at town meeting um, in June of 2020. Similarly, there is an action to set the maximum uh, to be expended from the article in a given year. I have spoken with the assistant superintendent for finance and operation and the recommended dollar amount would be $125,000 to be voted on at this town meeting. Article 28 would be to modify, potentially modify the various amounts of some of the revolving funds that are already um, codified. And uh, if uh, upon our review, there's any action to be taken, we will recommend it. It's also possible we'll be recommending passing over with that recommendation coming in on the morning of town meeting. Article 29, um, the small cell wireless facility zoning bylaw uh, would establish a zoning bylaw regulating the construction of so-called small cell wireless facilities on public and private property in town. Um, I have a series of slides that just describe uh, what's going on. Most importantly, we have no applications for such infrastructure to be constructed in North Reading at this time, but the town planner and the planning commission have been in discussions with Reading Municipal Light Department 
regarding potential um, utilization of uh, their poles here in, uh, in North Reading. Um, this would also address though uh, any potential construction on private property as well. Um, there's no information on uh, whether there's even a desire, but passing a zoning bylaw now um, would enable a review procedure um, should there be any future requests that come in. Um, there's a reference in this bylaw to a policy that would be passed by um, the CPC that could be amended from time to time that would include aesthetic requirements and application procedures. And we expect a select board will be asked to approve a similar policy for aesthetic components for anything that's requested to be installed on public property. Again, most likely on infrastructure owned by Reading Municipal Light Department. Are there any questions on that article? No questions. No. Okay. no. Article 30. So Article 30 and 31. I know the petitioners uh, are, are here. I recognize the Planning Commission is the petitioner for Article 30, which would establish an overlay district for a senior housing at 146 to 150 Park Street. Um, we have a couple of um, different slides that just describe this, again, for a development that would allow for a maximum of 50 units. Um, with eight affordable units in perpetuity on the site or about 15%. They would be age restricted with one occupant required to be 55 years or older. Um, four acres of development on three parcels. Zoning would allow multifamily residential but not nursing home or hospital, although these are already allowed in the underlying uh, local business zoning district. Um, and it would include mixed use component if allowed by the planning commission. Um, the applicant's office is contemplated to remain a commercial space. Um, so there's a bit of the history that's on here. And I know the planner is here as well to answer any questions. Um, there were several workshops held. The applicant's been before multiple boards and I know is here this evening as well. Um, there was a hearing that was held um, in, uh, in April. The proposal is a response to a new development concept and it's been sponsored by the planning commission consistent with the needs expressed in the housing production plan and the master plan. Um, senior housing, including affordable senior housing and a greater variety of housing types and choices. And we have um, a couple of different overviews that just show you the, um, um, the, the, the development of the multiple parcels uh, I play here. Um, here from 146 to 150 Park Street. Um, and there's a rendering that's also been provided of the contemplated project. Um, and through you, either Madam Chair or Madam Vice Chair, I, I do know that uh, the, the town planner is here, as is the chair of the planning commission and the attorney and the developer as well. Um, I know there's been some developments over the past couple of weeks with regard to this. Um, shall we start with the town planner on behalf of the sponsor? Sure, I'm just trying to see if there were any. Can you hear me, Mr. Gilberto? Yes, I can. Okay, you, okay. for a bit, it was a bit muddy there for a bit, so I shut the video off. But um, if there aren't any questions on this, um, then maybe perhaps we could go to the proponent for those couple of changes that were, we had discussed at our last meeting. And I believe the team is here again for this yes. meeting. So we have attorney Latham here. Why don't we recognize attorney Latham to go ahead and summarize the, the changes that you, you had wanted to discuss with regard to this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Chris Latham for um, Mr. Bruce Wheeler and uh, the rest of the team is here as well. Uh, based on the, uh, the prior uh, select board hearing um, and Mr. Wallner's suggestion about having local preference um, relative to market rate units, not just the affordable units, but market rate units as well, um, we reported back to CPC and CPC um, basically um, approved um, a local preference for market rate units. And um, we worked in conjunction with uh, town council. Uh, town council um, worked up a proposed motion um, that CPC, uh, as I understand it, is going to be uh, proposing uh, at, the, at the meeting. Um, and basically, uh, it basically outlines uh, how there is local preference uh, for market rate units. And um, if, if you'd like, I can share my screen and uh, I could show you uh, the, the exact motion if you'd like. Sure. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Right. Yep. 
So I'll stop my sharing. All right, and All I'll right. try to do my share. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can everybody see the screen? Yes. Okay. It's a little small, but we can see it. <laughs> okay. I can try to. Uh, I can try to blow it up a little bit more. It doesn't give me a little. It doesn't really give me a lot of options here. Oh, wait a minute. Um, zoom. That. Can you, is that better? Much. Yes. Okay. So, so basically um, what is, is it does is it removes section K uh, of the proposed bylaw. Now section K was dealing with um, internal um, things uh, such as the elevators that the uh, town council was concerned with as to whether that would be enforceable or not. Um, and he said that's obviously something that can be discussed in the permitting process. So what we propose is to put the local preference in section K. And so what it does is it says as part of the as a special permitting process, um, basically the, a, a, a local preference review of the, of the plan would be proposed to the CPC with input from the select board. And that would basically provide that market, new market rate units uh, would be sold to the general public. They'd have to first be given an opportunity uh, for uh, members of the town, current or former members of the town, employees of the town, a parent, child, or sibling of a, of a resident of the town. And uh, the plan would be provided for advanced uh, public notice at the developer's expense uh, for the local preference plan uh, and, and making public notice to North Reading residents that basically there's an availability of unit, uh, of, of uh, market rate units. And so this is uh, what I understand the CPC is going to be moving uh, because the warrant's already been um, published and everything, they're going to be moving uh, for this uh, motion of amendment to be uh, at, town, at town meeting. Okay. So, Madam, Madam Chair? Yes. Mr. Through you. Chair, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you. Through you to Attorney Latham and or the town planner, um, would there be a willingness to consider this as part of a, a main motion? So the, the main motion to approve the bylaw would include this modification in it rather than as a separate amendment? That, however, the, the CPC in town meeting wants to do it is, is fine with us. So, I, and I say that generally because if, you know, the consensus is, and I, I'm, I'm kind of asking the select board as well, you know, the consensus is that we all are in agreement on this as what's being brought to town meeting, you know, sometimes it's cleaner to just have the main motion to reflect that rather than to be debating a an amendment. Um, yeah, any Madam thoughts Chair, on that? Yeah, Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Pierce. We, we would have uh, no objection to that. It would make it, I do agree, it would make it cleaner. I, we weren't sure though if we could actually do that, uh, but I believe it as long as it falls within the four corners and, and there's no objection to that, I think we would uh, we'd like to do that. Okay, so to my colleagues. Mr. O'Leary? Yeah, absolutely. And you've just included them as part of the main motion. Have a handout for town meeting. It falls within the four corners and it's one motion, one and done. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mr. Waller? Yeah, I agree. It should be connected with the main motion. And I really appreciate uh, the extra effort you put in here uh, to make this happen. It's, it's more than what I hope for, and I'm really glad it happened. So thank you very much for being responsive and bringing this forward. I really appreciate it. Mr. Strudo, in agreement? Yes, thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez, in agreement? Yes, I am. All right. So let me see if there's any other questions. Any other questions, hands raised? OK. None. I see if, none either. And if I um, may, Madam Chair? Yes. And, and I, it's, it's not part of the bylaw, but I just wanted to raise to the select, select board's uh, knowledge that Mr. Wheeler has also expressed um, uh, the hope that basically he, he's offered or proposed to work with the town uh, CPC select board um, to possibly do some, some landscaping and some improvements um, relative to the town common um, that would be perpetually paid for by the homeowners association, particularly around 
um, the, the, the grandstand, the, the, the bandstand. Um, so we have a conceptual plan. I don't know if you want to see that tonight or not, um, but um, obviously it's something that obviously the town's going to be directing, but uh, we thought it would be something that would be uh, helpful and, and uh, be a very positive thing, both for the town and also for the residents of, of, the, of the project um, who are hopefully going to be uh, able to utilize some of this, um, this public space. Okay. Um, Troy, it's, it's, it's not really related to the warrant article, but while you're here, you might as well, you could show what you have to show. Um, and obviously that'll be driven by. Um, Madam Chair, I don't know if you can see this. Yes. Okay. So this is, is basically a, a concept plan and obviously, uh, uh, this is something that uh, Mr. Wheeler is proposing. Uh, of course, it would be in conjunction with what the what the town wants to do. Um, mm -hmm. Also, an okay. idea of maybe some potential lighting, so it would look well with the Ryer store across the street that has some lighting. But um, landscaping, it, it's not. We don't believe it's going to screw up with any of the sl of the sledding of the kids or anything like that. Um, and it, and it would you know utilize uh, basically giving some ADA access um, that I think would uh, be helpful and some uh, benches for people to sit in and enjoy the, enjoy the common. Okay, great. Any questions, comments? All set? Uh, so the CPC has taken formal action. Mr. Now. Yeah, the CPC has taken formal action on the, uh, on the article, making a recommendation. Yes, sir. Mr. That's my Pierce? understanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're um, we uh, we did, we have uh, recommended it. So, all but right. We haven't looked at we haven't looked at this uh, common enhancement yet. Uh, so we would probably uh, during the during the uh, site plan review process we would uh, look at this and make sure that there was uh, no problems with it. Okay. So, do we have any other questions of my colleagues, Mrs. Gonzalez? No, all set. Mr. Walner? All set, thank you. Mr. O'Leary, all set? All set. Mr. Studo? All set. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. L Attorney Latham. Thank you. Madam Chair, will we be making a recommendation? I was just, town meeting? I was just going to turn to just ask if there's any other questions of the uh, individuals attending. I only see attorney Latham's hand up. So <laughs> that's all right. You Remove my hand. If you had any more questions for us, any comments or any questions. And I do not see any. And Mr. Gilberto, you can confirm that, right? No, yeah. Okay, so this is one of the ones that we were holding off on until our informational hearing for a recommendation of the board. So do I hear a motion from my colleagues? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend article and code zoning amendments addition of senior housing overlay zoning district and related amendments. I'll second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Madam Chair. Mr. O'Leary. I would just like to comment once again that um, you know, Mr. Wheeler, uh, we've had a lot of experience dealing with Mr. Wheeler over the years and uh, developing in town. Uh, the experiences have been uh, mutually agreeable and uh, He's been a good listener, and obviously this is another example where he was listening uh, intently and put together a good team here, and I think the proposal is worthy of uh, support. So I again applaud his efforts, and I applaud his uh, willingness to work with uh, the town boards, committees, and commissions and um, accommodate what we were looking for. So, Thanks, Mr. Thank Any other comments, questions? I, I will just say from the chair, I agree wholeheartedly. I think this is a vastly different experience. And I haven't been around to work with Mr. Wheeler or Mr. Wheeler's team previously, but 
the information presented has what's sealed the deal for me the last meeting that you attended it was so well presented and my thought is at the time that this does come up at the town meeting that you you do that if you get leave of by the moderator that you can present that that was quite helpful to me and i know that the cpc worked uh pretty tirelessly with you as well on this. So I appreciate the input the CPC has presented. And both attorney Lathams were quite helpful in terms of us understanding this and seeing how it fits in our community. And, and good on Mr. Walner for recommending that residence preference too. So I think that that's, that's a, just an excellent, that was an excellent recommendation. And I was so pleased to see how quickly you came back with that, Mr. Wheeler. So we really appreciate that as well. Anything else before we take a vote? So it was a motion by Mr. Studo, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Do right. we have? A, do we do have a motion? Okay. All right. Seeing no further comment, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez aye. and Manu Pelli is I. It's unanimously recommended by the board. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Nathan. Our next article, Mr. Gilberto. <clears throat> Madam Chair, through you, Article 31, a citizen's petition to amend the zoning bylaws for Map 8, parcels 13, 14, and 15, which are properties located at 4, 12, and 14 Concord Street, uh, formerly known as Seven Acres Poultry Farm. Through you, Madam Chair, I do see that uh, Attorney Jill Mann is here, I believe on behalf of the now owner of the property, Mr. Sergio Cobiello. Who is also here. He's also an oh, attendant. Mr. Cobiello is well, welcome. Sure, Attorney Mann, welcome. Thank you very much. So why don't you take us through this? I think the biggest question I believe we had received was what's the plan? What's the plan for this? Which if you could just give us a summary of what this citizen, citizen's petition for rezoning is and oh, tell certainly. us the plan. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Coviello um, has purchased 12 and 14 Concord Street and is in the process of purchasing, purchasing four with the intent to allow those two residential structures that remain at the front of the building to stay. Um, his desire is to simply uh, renovate, I shouldn't say renovate, to redevelop the property, the, the rear portion of the property in order to use it for his business. Um, he's outgrown the business that he has presently, the location that he has. So he's simply wanting to keep his business within North Reading, and this site will allow him to do that. And what Mr. Coviello did is he has no desire to upset the neighborhood. He wants to try and keep that residential feel. So as you can see, what he had done was um, seek uh, an engineer to actually put together the aerial depiction that you see on the screen now. And he in fact sent that to all of the abutters as well, uh, all of the abutters to the neighborhood as well. Um, and what the intent is, is if you can see the red triangle or rectangle, I should say, right? The red rectangle would be the location of the new building that would support Coviello um, Electrical. And you can see that it's basically in line with the Bobcat building. And again, that those two residential structures remain. So I think one of the big contests with people on Concord Street originally was, well, what about the residential character of the neighborhood? And I think as most residents of Concord Street know, it's a very busy street. Um, and there is all types of industrial uses, um, if you will, to the lower part of Concord Street. And in fact, Mr. Pierce had even stated during one of the most recent planning board hearings that this property, which is now um, industrial office, is a zoning district that actually has less intense uses than when most of these people had moved into the neighborhood because back then it was heavily, heavily industrial, heavy industrial uses. Um, so this particular type of use almost represents a great interim um, zoning district because it's going to allow the residential uses to say he's going to be able to put up business use because should he not be able to develop it like this, it's a 15 acre parcel of land. 
um, that's in the residential zoning district. And I think that based on what I'm hearing um, from many people in the town of North Reading, it would be nice to have a development such as this that would generate um, tax re revenue without any um, incurrence of additional cost to the town. And given that this is going to be industrial, that's exactly what would happen. Um, and we will, I would point out that a couple of the neighbors who actually weren't in favor of doing this, once they saw Mr. Cobiello's plan, um, actually uh, noted their support and wrote a letter to the CPC in support of rezoning this particular parcel. I would also note too, you can see the paper street that separates this, pro this property. I know there'd been some, some issues of how far do you allow an industrial zone to creep? But it's pretty, it's pretty easy to actually identify the final point because there is a street that cuts off this property. It is an unbuilt street, a paper street, but there still is a street that runs all the way down um, to the bottom of the property. And that's really why we're seeking the rezoning because we think it's more appropriately used as an industrial property and less appropriate to be used as a, another residential subdivision off of this busy street. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Let's see if we have any questions um, to my colleagues, any questions? Any questions of the members in attendance? Or I see Mr. Walner's hand up. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, okay. I'm looking at the list. I'm so trying many, to find you. But Mr. Walner. Yeah. Um, way back in the summer when we were, uh, when this was being proposed, uh, there was a offer made by your client that they would um, section off part of the parcel to be for parcel and rec use. And we haven't heard anything about that since that time. So Parceled off for what? I apologize. I didn't hear it. Yeah, there was a there was a offer made to um, uh, create a certain section. If I remember, it was something like five thousand square feet. I can't remember exactly, but there was an offer made that if we, you know, if he got to buy the property, that he would designate some of that property towards parks and rec use. And I haven't heard anything about that since that time. I my understanding of that, Mr. Walner, was that was to so that we wouldn't proceed with trying to get the authorization from res the a town meeting to buy it ourselves. Oh. It, was, uh, it, was, it was to entice us not to move forward with our special meeting, which as you know, there, no, there wasn't enough uh, interest in the town to, for us to acquire the parcel. Mm. Uh, within that context, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Gilberto? And that's at that, that is the time that it was proposed to us. Yes, I, I have not heard much or anything uh, about it since that point in time. I honestly don't know anything about it either. Okay. Would, would your client care to comment? He's on. I, mean, I, I doubt that it's still an effective offer since the town did actually attempt to acquire. So um, I don't even, I, I see that Sergio's muted. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I honestly don't know anything about it. And I see that Sergio's muted. So I don't know if he left the room. Or, okay. Or... Yeah, that's okay. Um, uh, yeah, has the, has the CPC um, taken any action on this, Mr. Pierce? Yes, I mean, yeah. I know you have, I shouldn't have phrased it that way, but yeah. any recommendation is what, what I think we were waiting on your recommendation as well on this one. Well, I think we just had our last meeting voted to recommend. Um, okay, great. So, um, um, we, because we thought that the, uh, that we could use, that we'd already lost quite a bit of property to, quite a bit of commercial property has been lost to, um, to housing and so forth and to residential uses. So we kind of, um, we, we thought this might be a good addition. Again, as, as uh, Jill Mann pointed out, there is a fairly nice uh, boundary line to it, uh, an actual demarcation line, if you will, that, uh, that makes it a little more difficult for it to move forward any further than this, which was one of the concerns and um, kind of puts an end, an end, a, a, um, end to, the, to the expansion of that zone. Okay, I do have a question here from 
Ms. Doherty, how large will the commercial building be in square feet? Feet, feet, yeah. And how large will the parking areas, etc., be? I think all we have right now, unless Jill has an answer for that, I think all we have now is a, is a, a sketch uh, uh, of what we're gonna of what's proposed. I don't think there's any real number hard numbers on it yet. We okay. were not presented with any. Um, and again, during site plan review, that will all that will all come out. Um, but we didn't. Uh, there was no discussion about. Um, parks and rec use either. So I do believe that, that Mr. Gilbert is correct. That was back before we actually uh, didn't buy it. You know. Okay, any other questions? Let me see. I'm seeing none. Mr. Gilbert, you don't see any, right? Good. Madam Chair. Good. Mr. O'Leary. Just uh, the current proposal calls for uh, leaving two of the parcels as residential, but this, looking to still have that included in the rezoning. Uh, did that come up during the planning commission meeting and was there any consideration to um, keep those as residential for a transition for the neighborhood? Uh, we did not discuss that uh, specifically. Um, they indicated that they were leaving that uh, residential because it was um, that actually worked for them. They didn't really need that residential space out front. And, it, and it's a good buffer. So uh, perhaps uh, and this man can, uh, uh, you know, give us more information on that. But we didn't propose to, to leave them out actually, because you would have to, act, we have to do an ANR plan in order to even carve out those pieces. So because we're going to have to have sufficient frontage to have the lot be an IO district on its own, um, when we cut it out, the purpose will be to retain enough area so that those two other lots can actually be continued to be used and not be um, completely non-conforming. I mean, we didn't discuss it extensively though. And we could have done that. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Just, Kelleher. Just, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, just as a follow up, maybe to Danielle, just a further explanation as to what, what could have been done or could be done in relation to retaining the residential. I have not looked at it for that purpose at all. It never came up in the CPC discussions. Um, so I'd have to look at the properties to kind of measure it out, probably similarly to how the applicant would need to do that. Um, so I really can't comment on that. Unfortunately, we just we just didn't look at it. Okay. Mr. Kelleher. Mr. O'Leary, are you all set? All set for now, thank you. Mr. Kelleher. I was just wondering if, if we know anything about what the anticipated traffic flow particularly truck traffic flow will be onto Concord Street? At this time, we don't know um, what it would be. Um, far less than 15 homes, but I don't know what it would be. Just a little, little concern with the, that, that close to the intersection. Okay. Just as a clarification, doesn't Mr. Coviello already operate on Concord Street? So there wouldn't be any additional traffic added to Concord Street? It's just a relocation of the, of the commercial vehicles? It, this is true. So he's not going to be bringing any more additional traffic, but the other building, quite frankly, will have to be occupied. So yes, his existing business simply is going to move here and it'll be the same thing. I mean, with, with this type of a business and this type of a contractor, you get you have people come to the building, pick up all the, the materials, load up their trucks and then go. It's not a retail facility where you have people coming all day long. So that that high demand with regard to traffic isn't present. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Attorney Mann. Thank you. Uh, this is another article that we had delayed a vote on for the presentation. So um, do I have a motion from my colleagues? Madam Chair. <clears throat> um, oh. Madam Chair, I move to recommend article 
31 citizens petition amend zoning bylaws map 18 parcel 13 14 and 15. second motion by mr studio second by mr o'leary discussion any discussion mr o'leary yeah, yeah madam chair just uh, as i pointed out at the uh, special town meeting that we had um, to purchase the, the turkey farm you know, I certainly was in favor of the town purchasing it. And again, we had a majority there, but not a two thirds. Mm -hmm. um, but again, town meeting took action and therefore, you know, we did not become the owners of it. But I stated at that particular time that I took some solace in the fact that the um, intended purchaser was, was Mr. Caviello, mm -hmm. a long-term resident of the community, active in the community as uh, his family has, has grown up and now living in, in, in the community. So he has a vested interest and is obviously uh, sensitive to um, what the needs of the neighborhood and the concerns of the neighbors are there. So again, as I stated at that particular point in time, you know, if we were going to partner with somebody, it would be someone like Mr. Calviello, if we were going to be you know, in supportive of something, it would be with someone like Mr. Calviello. So in that respect, uh, uh, I congratulate him on his purchase. I could, Hope that his business continues to thrive and stay in North Reading, and I, I will be supporting it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Any other um, discussion of my colleagues? Mr. Oh, Walner? Just, Mr. Just Walner. One, just one question, because um, I wasn't at the CPC meeting. Um, did you have local neighbors come to the meeting that uh, opposed the plan? Mr. Pierce. Yes, yes we did. Um, we had one neighbor that, that opposed the plan um, who had been there for, you know, uh, I think he said 40 some odd years, had lived there, which of course means, as uh, this man pointed out, that when he moved there, it was heavy industrial. And then since then, we changed it to the IO district in order to um, stop the heavy industrial and get something a little cleaner and quieter uses, which we eventually have done. If you sit down there now, there's a lot of... Um, much less intense uses that a lot of the trucking company stuff is gone. Um, so we, we basically accomplished that goal. But that was, a, that was, that was about it. And, and, and basically, all of us, you know, well, most of us who live in town, live in some place where I started out on a, on a dead end street and it became a thoroughfare. So um, this, is, this is progress in the town. In this particular case, uh, I think this is uh, a move in the right direction. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Any other questions? Mr. Studo. Um, I'd just like to say that um, I think, uh, you know, to piggyback on uh, Mr. O'Leary, I do not know Mr. Coviello uh, as well personally, so I had to ask around, but I, you know, all positive opinions. And also, um, you know, one thing I'll mention because, you know, there, there's other projects as well where traffic has been a big thing and can be, you know, as much as I would love Mr. Covello's business to get to the point where he does have as much flow as uh, 15 homes, because that would be awesome for our tax base. I mean, that's uh, that that'd be one real big electrical office. I, I do agree that I think just taking a common sense approach from the traffic that, you know, 15 homes, two cars per home, plus visitors, plus that. So, again, I just like to mention that I, I, I have been in those CPC meetings and the and the traffic question has come up a lot and I just think that if you really just if you step back and take out the emotion and just look at the practical use of it I mean I, I don't really understand the question why you know it's a pretty simple thing where you know just do the difference of what it could be so um, I am in support of it I just wanted to give that little tidbit that I've been trying to figure out how, how somebody, you know, can reasonably think that there'd be as much traffic as that. And, you know, again, it's a fair question, but once you think it through, you just, it really didn't make, uh, you know, it didn't, it didn't add up. So um, I just like to give that just after listening to it for a couple months now. If I, you know, if I may, Madam Chair, yes, um, there, there will, um, you know, we'll do a traffic, there'll be a traffic study done and we'll see if there are any recommendations necessary as far as you know, turns and, and how the how the uh, how the driveway intersects with the roadway. That traffic study will be done in the in the site in the process of the site plan review. We pretty much always do one, especially on commercial property. So, so um, those questions will be answered. If changes need to be made to make it work well, you'll be part of the plan. 
Yeah, that's a great point, Mr. Pierce, because this has to go through a public hearing process. This is yeah. just giving Mr. Caviello the opportunity to develop it as he would like to, as to why he purchased it. And, and it's still going to go through additional hearing and review yep. and vote and consideration for whatever the ultimate proposal is with perhaps conditions if need be um, exactly. by the CPC. But with this just, in order for him to relocate his business, this zoning change has to happen there because it was a farm before this, so. That's true. Um, and also I, I would just echo what Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Studo said, and also appreciate the input of the CPC, but I think Mr. Caviello has been pretty upfront this entire process, this entire time that we took to look into the acquisition of the land, which of course the town meeting rules and town meeting didn't want us to acquire it. So I'm in favor of him being able to develop it as, as, his, as his needs uh, are necessary. Obviously, of course, with the, with the you know, public process review that it requires. And, um, and also he knows the traffic flow already because his, his business isn't that far up the road from there from what I understood during town meeting. So I think he's pretty familiar with the area. Mm -hmm. And like Mr. O'Leary said, he li he's lives here. He's lived here his whole, he knows how the area has changed and he knows how, you know, what it was before and what it is now. So, um, and I, I'd be, I'm, in, I'm fully in favor of it as well to letting him get, get it to where he wants it to get it, use it for the way he wants to use it. All right, any other questions? Mrs. Gonzalez. Uh, I just wanted to uh, agree with my colleagues. Um, I also was in favor of the town buying the turkey farm, um, supported that, but with it not going through, I feel we're pretty lucky to have Mr. Caviello, the one to have it. And um, I fully support this too. Okay. All right. Any other co comments of my colleagues? So with that, I think we have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary and the motion, motion to recommend at town meeting. And we'll call the roll. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manny Pelli is that unanimously recommended. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you Good for night. the presentation. Thank you. And we have the last article, I believe, relating to this, which um, if Ms. McKnight, I think it, we understand that, the, that with this modification, there have to be some... Hold on a second. Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you have to modify our zoning bylaw for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, right. yes. Mrs. McKnight, oh, actually, Mr. Gilbert, the last article, it's the last article that we're talking about, right? Correct, yes. Did you, okay, great. And it would be an article to modify the zoning um, bylaw, specifically the zoning map to reflect the zoning change contemplated in the citizen's petition. My recommendation to the board would be to uh, recommend in accordance with your previous vote. Sure, anything else, Mrs. McKnight, you wanna add to that? Uh, no, the only reason to go ahead with this article is if Article 31 passes. Um, if it doesn't pass, there will be no need for this article um, at all. Okay. All right. So uh, let me see if there's any questions. And I see none. And I see none in the chat room. That is a previous question that was already answered. Okay, so what is the board's pleasure with respect to Article 32? Mr. Studo, do Mr. O'Leary, do we have a motion? I think we'd have to wait to see what town meeting action is. No. Okay. So, yeah, recommended town meeting, which is where we have it. All right, so not, no further vote on it. Because that's, that's the previous article requires a two thirds vote. Right, change in the zoning bylaw. Right. Yeah, so it requires two thirds. Okay. Which we know from experience is tough to get. Mm -hmm. All right, so that this concludes the informational hearing. 
All right, seeing no further questions or comments. We'll move on. Thank you for um, everyone that attended and participated with that was very helpful. Uh, we'll move on to the town administrator's report. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair, through you. Um, I have a limited report this evening, which is just to issue a uh, friendly reminder that uh, we do have seasonal uh, water use um, restrictions in effect. It's voluntary water conservation for outdoor water use um, here in town. Um, you know, we are seeing, again, very high demand uh, for water, um, especially in the past couple of weeks. The water department is managing that um, you know, for the time being, but we're gonna to continue to be monitoring that use. So uh, we're not here asking for any change in the restriction at this point in time, but uh, we will be putting out some information, just advising folks that we do have voluntary water conservation um, in effect here in town at this time of year. Uh, other than that, that concludes, uh, concludes my uh, report for this evening. Okay, thank you. We will do board member reports. Oh, Mr. Larry, did you have a question? I had a question in relation to um, the uh, loosening of restrictions. Uh, and again, we're, we're opening up town hall. Uh, what are we, uh, what is the administration doing in relation to um, employees that are vaccinated and non-vaccinated? And uh, how are we going to be monitoring and ensuring that our employees are safe, uh, the uh, public is safe? And uh, what, what are we doing moving forward? Through you, Madam Chair, um, we have, uh continue to have, uh, first, uh, for those of you who've been in the building over the past year, you see the changes that we've made, um, particularly to the offices that did not previously have customer service windows. Um, we have installed um, temporary um, type set setups for um, customer service, including here in, uh, in this office, using plexiglass as well as some permanent installation that's been made, particularly in the uh, town clerks and the building uh, slash DPW departments. Um, we've also instituted some changes to access in the smaller areas. Um, we've thinned out some of the office space that uh, was more densely staffed. We did that last fall, and uh, the intention is to keep that in place uh, moving forward. Um, we also do uh, and continue to follow the requirements for um, uh, masks being worn indoors, and that's something that we'll be looking at based on whatever guidance comes out over the next few days for the future. Uh, in terms of vaccinations, uh, we are not uh, instituting any sort of uh, requirement for employees uh, to be vaccinated at this point in time. Um, you know, we've had, uh, you know, some conversation about it, but, but feel that, you know, the number of steps that we've put in place with the additional cleaning and sanitizing that we're doing, the hand washing <laughs> patients, um, that, you know, that we have steps in place that would, uh, would address that. But, uh, you know, at this stage in time, we're not, uh, not intending to issue any sort of requirement for, uh, for, for vaccinations amongst, uh, among employees. You know, I did have some conversation with our, uh, you know, town council and with my, my colleagues in surrounding communities, and it would appear that uh, that's pretty consistent feedback from what I'm hearing from other communities as well. Um, you know, that they're really focusing on the, the safety component of it, but, uh, you know, not uh, require any sort of vaccination to take place. So that, that, that's where things stand right now um, in terms of our intent. And, you know, we're obviously monitoring things as, uh, as additional guidance comes out. Okay. Madam Chair. Okay. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, uh, how do we know, I mean, are, we, are we requiring uh, non-vaccinated employees to wear masks? So right now our requirements for masks in the building um, have not changed since where they were at in um, December, January. Folks are, are required to put on their masks when they leave their desk, even within the offices, um, certainly in the public areas um, as well. Um, you know, look, uh, you know, are there instances where multiple vaccinated people are together and by agreement, you know, they're, they're taking their masks down. I'm not going to sit here and say that that's not happening, but um, you know, that's being, I, I, I'm, I'm confident that that's happening only to the extent that all the parties involved might be, be comfortable. But in terms of our policies here, you know, when an employee is leaving their desk, we are asking them to put on their masks and employees have been very good and very patient with that. Um, to the extent where there was a point in time when they were required to wear a mask at their desk and, and they were willing to do that. So I feel like we've got a pretty good routine and, and regimen that's working here. And, you know, things have gone very well over the past couple of weeks. So the, the past week with regard to allowing the public in um, and that, that we are, you know, we're well positioned here. But I, my question was, are we, the, the people who are not vaccinated, the recommendation is that they wear masks. So, and again, do we know what the, you know, what, 
how many people are vaccinated, how or not. I mean, we have an obligation, obviously, to our employees and to the general public. I mean, we're an employer. Employers can put restrictions in place, or mandate restrictions in place to protect other employees. Do we have an interest in protecting our employees and what steps are we taking to do that? So I, I, again, I, I, we've had the same mask requirement in place. We're not- I, I know what the current that. is, but we're talking about moving forward because things, things are loosening up, that's all. Hold on, but Madam Chair, can I just ask a question, Mr. O'Leary, I'll ask for you. Are you going to mandate vaccine passports to get into town hall? Enough dancing around him, Mr. O'Leary. I'm just asking what, it, again, I'm asking what, what the plan is moving forward because I, I don't know what it is. Oh, no, no. Let, uh, hang on, hang on, folks. Hang on, folks. We're not going to talk over one another. It's already difficult <laughs> enough. Ha hang on, hang on, folks. Madam Chair, can I speak? All right, Mr. Mr. O'Leary's right now. Mr. O'Leary is asking Mr. Gilberto some questions about the report. So, Mr. O'Leary, I don't hear that your question's been. Answer. I don't believe my question has been answered. Again, okay, I, know, so I know what the current ask it again, and, and then we can have follow. -up. Everyone's going to have an opportunity, so yeah. everyone can have a follow up. But go ahead, Mr. O'Leary. I, I said I know what the current standards are, what's been in place. What I'm asking is, moving forward, as an employer, you know, we have a, a right, first of all, but an obligation to protect our employees. What is the protocol that's going to be in place? to require or not require non-vaccinated individuals to wear a mask. So you're asking when non-vaccinated individuals come into town hall, will they be required to wear a mask? No, 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 no. Employees, our employees, our non-vaccinated employees, are they going to be required to wear a mask? So, so for the time being, we're not expecting to, re to, to make any change to the mask requirement. So, so in, in, in other words, internally, they'll still be wearing masks. Employees will still be wearing masks. Unless they are at their workstation, right? Right now, we're, we're not intending to, to make that change. Um, you know, we'll watch, we'll watch as things develop over the coming weeks, but right now, our intention is to maintain the same mask requirement we've had going back to December, January. Okay. That folks who are at their desk do not have to wear a mask, regardless of whether they're vaccinated or not, but everybody, when they stand up and leave their desk, is asked to put a mask on. Okay, does that answer the question, Mr. O'Leary? That's not gonna, that, although the, all the restrictions are ended, that's not gonna end the requirement for, for personnel. They're gonna wear the masks in the building. They're being- but For their own protection and for the protection of the general public. I, what I heard was they're going to be asked to do so. So again, as a, as a work requirement, as an employer, are we gonna be requiring them to do it rather than asking them to do it. I don't anticipate changing the requirement in the near future. And right now they're required to wear their masks when they leave their desks. And as I previously indicated, you know, I don't want to misrepresent it. There are instances where multiple vaccinated folks agree to be in the same room and not have a mask on, but that happens voluntarily. And I would say that it's not common because it's not often that folks are in that type of a meeting space. And then my other question was, are you aware as to how many people are vaccinated and are not? Um, I can tell you that we haven't polled our employees, but a number of them were involved in, um, in either operating the clinics and were vaccinated in the course of that, um, or were uh, able to access so that we're aware that they showed up to be vaccinated because they had access here. But in terms of an exact number, I don't have that number. Percentage, I mean, I. I Okay. Do, do we have a handle on it? I, get it. I have no idea. I, I, again, I, I, we haven't polled our employees on it. Um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't think you'd be complex. allowed to poll your employees on that. You're not. And uh, I got a lot of attorneys with a lot more experience than anybody here that if they want to challenge them tomorrow, I'll pay for the $1,000 an hour phone call. They can tell you directly. Okay, Mr. Studo, we're getting some information. Okay. Just, but again, so last, but, everybody but, needs to stay, stay calm, but, cool, and collected here. Mr. O'Leary's just asking questions. Mr. Gilberto's just giving answers. And there's really no need for you to hire a lawyer, even though you have a right to hire a lawyer if you need to. But we're just trying to get some information here. But Mr. Gilberto, I wouldn't think you'd be allowed to ask that, ask 
of your staff that, that kind of information, unless they volunteer it to you. We, we may be able to survey them you know, informally, I, but the, even that I don't know. Yeah, you'd have to ask them, just like with the mask requirement, you'd have to ask them, it's up to you to respond to it. But Madam Chair, it's my understanding that as an employer, you can require non-vaccinated people to either wear a mask, you know, or get vaccinated, or you can actually require them to get vaccinated. You, you can require it. Everything that I've been reading, everything that's been said, employers have the right to require their employees to be vaccinated. Private. I, I don't. I don't think that's what Mr. Gilberto's doing. I know. Are you, are you what I'm asking to find him out. to do that? Because I, I think he would. He definitely would have to hire a lawyer to get a, a legal opinion as to whether or not that's appropriate. We have we have town council that can give us that opinion. Again, Mr. Gilberto. You no, know, to that issue, we we did. There is guidance that's been put out by our our town council, which uh, goes back to December, and it does indicate that there is an ability to to have a, a mandate. Um, but there, there is also a, a pretty involved process with regard to allowing exemptions for it, um, making sure that we're accommodating the employees and protecting their privacy as well. So uh, it certainly is not something that, that is straightforward. But you know, I can tell you from just the conversations here, it's not something that we felt that we need to pursue at this point in time based on what we hope to initiate for continue or to continue to implement for the safety requirements, the masks, the cleaning, trying to maintain the social distancing you know, to the extent that we can, mm -hmm. um, which has worked fairly well for us in the town hall over the past year or so. Okay. Okay, any other questions, Mr. O'Leary? No, I may have a comment after. Okay. Um, Miss, Mr., Miss, Mrs. Gonzalez. Any questions, comments? Any questions of the COVID-19 update? <laughs> um, I just wanna clarify the fact that um, everything that's in place has been working all along. Correct, Mr. Gilberto? I, I mean, you're saying you're gonna keep it as is. People are six feet apart. They're wearing their mask if they leave their, their desk. I, I don't see what the issue is. Gilberto. Madam Chair, yeah, so yes, our, our intention is to maintain those those safety protocols for the time being, you know, and in my sitting here saying that we're going to keep them forever. No, um, no, really, I think the next window that we expect to look at is expanding those walk in hours to match the, the regular um, town, town hall schedule. Um, you know, and we're looking to see whether that's something that makes sense for us to do next week or whether we need a little bit more time. But short of the other requirements, I don't see them you know, I don't see them changing, you know, in the, in the near future. Mr. Any other questions, Mrs. Gonzalez? No? No. Okay. Mr. Walter? Um, I'll just say it's a, I think it's an emerging question. I think it's a difficult question. Um, and it's something that'll have to be worked through. And I think many people are struggling with the same question. So I, uh, it's just, we're just not there yet. Um, I think it's fair that the people that have got the vaccines at some point want to lose their masks because they've, they've gone through that effort. So that's why I see the rub coming in is that at some point they feel protected. They feel like they're not going to give it to anybody else and they want to take their mask off. And so they should, you know, I feel like they should be able to do that. But again, it's just a little bit too early right now to know what to do. So I think Michael's in a difficult situation. I hope our board of health chimes in. And I hope that uh, best practices will be established in other places soon enough as we move forward, because I think it's, I think there's, there's never going to be a great answer to this. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wanna. Mr. Strudel? Uh, just a couple of things. First, uh, my apologies, Mr. O'Leary, for chiming in. It's a heated subject, so, you know. Yes, okay. um, but I would like to, I, I, I feel like we, for this, just my only comment, is that we got to take reference from somewhere. Um, there was a great article over the weekend. The White House is now full of hugs. No one in the White House wears a mask anymore. Guests are not <laughs> being asked. Employees are not being asked. This is all on, on CNN. 
and any website. So meaning that if we take direction from the top, and I don't know what they're going to do at the state, but so far, the highest level of government, they are, I mean, they are a, a, about a 10 steps ahead of Mr. Gilberto in North Reading. So, and the other reason too is to me, from the time I've been on this board, and it's just relevant to this issue, I've been told you really got to represent yourself, not your people, not like the people, not yourself. So for me personally, and I'm talking to everybody, I spoke to seven different business owners in North Reading. Not one of them is even sniffing mass mandate. And I know a private business can do what they want. But to me, if we take the direction of the people of North Reading and maybe my demographic, and this is business owners, so that's different. But to me, and from what I'm hearing, like, I think if you trust the science and you're vaccinated, someone unvaccinated can't get you sick. And if you want to run the risk unvaccinated, then that's your prerogative. So I'll just keep it at that, that again, if we trust the science and we see what's going on at other levels of government, this is really going to be a moot point. And we can beat it down. I mean, and again, it is my opinion only, but to me, come Saturday the 29th, I think that the town needs to start justifying why they're going above and beyond the state not just saying we're going to do it on abundance of caution is not going to work anymore starting next week, in my opinion. So I'll leave it at that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. I guess you have a couple of different schools of thought, but it is good to hear that the employees are of their own volition abiding by the requests that you're making. And I, I you haven't given us an update that they've been, many instances of transmission personnel to personnel. And of course, we do all share the same concern of when the building opens to the public, making sure our personnel are protected as well. But I mean, it's good for you to keep us updated on where, where you're going with that. And we do, we do have a high level of trust that you'll modify things as you need to in respecting people's privacy as well. Thank so you. thank you for the update. So now let's move on to the next order of business, which is the board member reports. And we kind of do board member reports and all the new business together. So Mr. O'Leary, you kick it off for us. Well, if, uh, someone asked as to whether or not the, the Board of Health should be weighing in on this. I, I actually uh, attended the Board of Health meeting uh, the other evening and uh, broach the subject, their biggest concern in relation to uh, town employees and the requirements and whether being an employer, the first thing that they were concerned about is that first of all, they didn't want to be the ones who, who had to police it and, you know, nor should they be, you know, uh, but they would uh, obviously uh, like to see best practices, uh, you know, put into place. Um, and if um, the administration would like an opinion of them based upon what they're doing, they will opine. Um, if they're not going to offer an opinion at this particular point in time, because as uh, other people have pointed out, there's um, you know a whole host of um, schools of thought, you know. And uh, but again, it, to me, again as an employer, uh, we have an obligation to our employees. Uh, as a uh, public service organization in town government, we have a, an obligation uh, to protect the public. And um, you know, for those that are uh, not um, are choosing not to get vaccinated, you know, they're putting other people at risk and, uh, and themselves in particular. And again, as far as, you know, uh, vaccinated people, you know, can't get sick, that's not true. As to, I mean, what they do, they can still test positive and till, still transmit it. Ask the New York Yankees. Uh, they've got several cases uh, where they've tested positive, they've all been vaccinated, and they would be carrying. So, I mean, for the unvaccinated people, that too is a risk. So, again, I, I think as an employer, we have an obligation um, that it don't appear, in my mind, in my opinion, uh, to be meeting. But again, um, town administrator is in charge. Um, enough said on that. In relation to the rest of the Board of Health, again, they've, um, as the town administrator pointed out earlier in his uh, report, COVID update, they've been working with the school department in relation to uh, voluntary vaccinations and been coordinating uh, with the school department and the vendor, uh, which again is a wonderful thing. And, Apparently, a lot of people have already agreed to sign up and, and participate. Uh, they're also working very hard in uh, facilitating um, the opening of the brewery. 
um, you know, there was an issue in relation to um, the vats and the, the effluent that it uh, creates and should it be in the septic system or not. And they uh, got guidance from the state and uh, worked with the uh, owners of the property and that's been worked out and the plans have been approved and that's moving forward. So we'll have our newest restaurant up and running shortly, I hope. So uh, again, I want to uh, appreciate the, uh, the health agent and the Board of Health uh, moving expeditiously. They, they had up to 45 days to, uh, to respond to the, the plans that were submitted and they did it you know, inside of a week. So uh, kudos to them for assisting local businesses and getting up and running. Uh, as a somewhat of an aside, um, members of the Board of Health, not per se the Board of Health, just as just public service announcement that the board members should be made aware is that there's gonna be an effort to be made to expand a uh, playground area in Institute River Park in memory of uh, uh, Martin Fair, our longtime health, health agent who had been here for probably close to 30, 35 years, uh, who passed away suddenly uh, and unexpectedly uh, so shortly after he retired from here and uh, members of the Board of Health and people who knew Martin well uh, wanted to do, do something uh, to honor him so that there will be some efforts being put forth to raise some money to uh, buy some new playground equipment at Itzer River Park uh, in memory of Martin. So board members, please be uh, aware that this is gonna be coming up and supportive as you can. Um, other than that, I'm all set, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Walmer? Yeah, uh, two things. One is um, the uh, study that we did in the fall uh, with the, um, for the, um, Sorry, I'm not feeling very well tonight, so I'm kind of stumbling on my words. Try to do it again. Uh, the AARP Age Friendly Initiative for Town. We had like 13, 1400 people that participated in that, including um, a lot of people in our town government. You know, key people, things like that. We're going to be seeing the results on Thursday uh, for our first look. So this is with the UMass Gerontology. Um, they're actually nationally renowned um, for being leaders in this effort, and um, uh, and so it's really gonna be exciting to see what comes from that meeting. Uh, Jen Ford, who's our youth director, is interestingly involved with this as is Catherine McCabe Scott, who's a volunteer and myself. So we'll be seeing that and we're not sure if we'll report on the results during the summer or early fall, depending on what we see for information, but it'll be exciting to see the results and uh, um, see how the town overall feels about this initiative. Um, second thing, um, indulge let, in, let me indulge myself just a little bit here and I think you'll support it uh, uh, tomorrow is the one year anniversary of the murder of George Floyd um, it, it's important that we recognize that but it's also important to recognize that what the town has done from a positive point of view so as you may recall very early there was a, a public demonstration uh, organized by the newly formed Hornets against hate um, and a few of our select board members attended um, and we were in support of this type of initiative, you know, making social change, recognizing our part to do what we can possibly do. Um, and so uh, that got started. And one of the things that didn't change as a result of that was the police department. And the reason why I point out the police department is because we never had to defund or reallocate their, their budget. They had already done proactive things like bringing in mental health counselors, like bringing in the officer into the high school and middle school to work with the youth and to have a mental health counselor and drug counselor on hand as well. So our police department is way ahead of us as far as social change is concerned. But uh, what, have we, what have we done over the last year that's, that's notable? There is a Hornets Against Hate, which has provided a platform for people to talk about these types of things. There's another group called the Human Rights Group that has done book studies and um, even uh, has been bringing in, uh, um, uh, has been consulting with other towns about initiatives they've been doing and pouring that over to the library. The library as a result is uh, taking a more aggressive action in providing education to the town that wasn't happening a year ago. Um, and we've seen much more um, people getting involved, especially more recently with the challenges to the election where people have started speaking up about how they feel about racial issues, how they feel about these things. And I think it's pretty fairly overwhelming whether you look at the letters to the editor, especially more recent ones, or look at social media, is that most people really do feel that North Reading is a good town that treats people well, but also is willing to um, do the hard work to get better at what we're doing. 
So um, I think it's good news. I know there's been recent people who have been very uncomfortable with change. That's inherent in our world. But um, I think overall, I'm very proud of what the town has done. And I think it's uh, would escape us not to recognize that um, in the high school, they have changed school policy to take a more assertive stance on creating racial equity. And they created a new, a, a new group, which was this, the Racial Activism Club. And that was founded by a person named Shibby uh, Shrinkhop, and I hope I pronounced her last name right. And she's the founder, a junior and founder. And by the way, she has been consulting with people like the Human Rights Group and the Hornets Against Hate. So, you know, this is really, um, I've said, I've always thought is how do you wake people up in our town when everything's been going okay and we don't have to think about these things? Um, our kids are thinking about it and they're active in thinking about it and they're, they want to be engaged on this. And this is really where efforts are, should be directed to. And so if the, um, the chair will allow me to, I'd love to play the PSA that they won in Massachusetts. They wanted, they did a PSA. It was compared against 60 other contributions. It's only a minute long, minute and 19 seconds long. And if it's okay with the chair, I'd like to play for the town to hear. And, uh, and then I'll end my, and, and my report. I think it's all positive news. Sure, do you share your, share your screen or? Yeah, can you do that, Mike? Is it a video or an audio? It's a, it's a video, yeah, it's just a, it's just a minute long. And uh, you, you should be authorized to share your screen. If you look in the bottom center. Yeah, I see it and I'll run it right now. And thanks for your indulgence, I appreciate it. Can you see it? Not yet. Oh, mm -hmm. you see it now? Yes. yes. I'll start again. Sorry. There we go. When we look in justice and faith, whether we be black, white, or brown, we have the choice of how to respond. Anger and frustration will plant the seed of change. But empathy and love will make the garden flourish. We are students and we are here to learn and grow, to change the world. We go to school with the hope of finding ourselves, our passions, and our talents. But so few of us have the opportunity to do so. In 2011, only 57% of our Black peers, our fellow students, had access to advanced math and science classes in school. And nearly all have experienced and continue to experience systemic bias in their education. But students of color are not a statistic. And we stand together with our peers across the nation whose diverse voices and lives have put them in the face of injustice. We share their sorrow, their anger, their frustration, and we share with them our love, our peace, and a promise to do better to make change. Black pain, black matter. Enough said. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Walner. All right. Well, that's a tough act to follow, right, <laughs> Mrs. Gonzalez? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go next. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I'll talk about the Putnam Property Committee, <laughs> and um, they are tying up loose ends and and made the um, have done a great job of meeting and. Um, getting things going so that they can spend the money that they were allotted at town meeting um, so they can start fixing up the properties over there. And I think we all look forward to that. Hopefully, hopefully by Apple Fest, we'll see some mm -hmm. progress made. Um, and Apple Fest, I believe, is on. So that'll be a nice opportunity to hopefully see some progress with the, with the, ho with the houses there. So Get um, back to normal. What is normal, man? <laughs> we forgot. <laughs> and um, I, I'm just going to weigh in on the whole mask thing myself. And 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 I, I, I feel very much the same as uh, Mr. Studo does. Um, I believe that, you know, once, once the masks are not required anymore. I really don't see how you tell some people that they have to wear them and other people that they don't. Um, the science tells you that if you're vaccinated, you're protected. If you have chosen not to be vaccinated, 
for whatever personal reasons you might have. They could be health reasons. They could be advised by a doctor. Um, you're the one at risk, not anyone else. Um, so if you choose to wear a mask, that would be your choice. Um, I don't think people should be treated like lepers. So um, that's just my opinion that I would like to weigh in for uh, Mr. Gilberto, who's gonna <laughs> have some tough decisions to make and there are a lot of opinions out there. So um, that's mine. So I will. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Studo. So here's an obviously thing. My whole board member report is about business and the business of North Reading. I'm gonna to stick to that. So it's about an EDC update. As everyone knows, or I've mentioned a couple of times, we are, uh, um, we're holding an event. It's the Tuesday after the town meeting, which I believe is June 8th. I'm sorry, I, I, I keep confusing the dates. Um, but it's, um, we have some advertising. You may, uh, we're gonna have some billboards. Uh, it's really great. We're, we're already getting a great response from the businesses, like I said, Almost every business that like we've talked to between me and the other EDC members, I mean, are ecstatic that starting this Saturday, it's, you know, unless otherwise they get told, they're gonna act like it is normal. I mean, the restrictions are gone. So I think it's very, it's a great time where, I think if you remember a couple months ago, I go, hey, we're gonna take this gamble to try to put this event on and let's hope things are, you know, the, the data keeps getting better and it, it worked out better than we even expected. So that's great. So what I would like to ask the board is tell any business owners, especially I have to rely on, I mean, everyone here has been in town a lot longer than me. So I know a lot of, I, I, I think I know a lot of business owners and then I'll talk to Mr. O'Leary for five minutes. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't know those hundred people. So it's like, um, you know, I would implore you to, you know, get these people there. I think it's going to be a great event. You're, you're going to get some great ideas. Um, you know, and again, it's something where we're sensing the excitement on the EDC, but it's something where I know that, you know, everybody, you know, if everybody on this board made five to 10 calls, we could even have an even better event. So, um, you know, it's, uh, we, that's, that's the extent of my board member report at this point. Uh, Nothing from CPC. You already heard it all <laughs> during the warrant article. So, um, you know, other than that, uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you. I have a, um, oh, excuse me. I have, a, I have a question for Mr. Studo about that. Mm -hmm. um, for the EDC event, if we're going to tell business people about it do they have to rsvp in a certain way oh yes thank you very much yes so the rsvp is to either diane mcknight or lisa egan from the chamber or even me or anyone here right i mean anyone you think that can get in touch with the edc yeah and the rsvp is um the date is the fourth danielle uh, mcknight yeah yeah Danielle, is that what i said what did i say yeah <laughs> Oh, but it sorry. is getting late. Danielle, no, no, I mean, yeah, sorry. Danielle McKnight, my apologies there. My apologies to Danielle, who's not on. I'll have to text her tomorrow. Um, so, so yes, but there is a good question. There is an RSVP to June 4th. And like a lot of these things, I, I know everyone likes to wait last minute, but I swear if you RSVP, yes, and then you don't make it, no one's going to send you a bill. So if you have some interest, please let us know. Okay, thank you. And just from the chair, I just want to thank um, Senator Tarr and Representative Jones um, and the um, Housing and Economic Development Secretary, Mike Keneally, and the Energy and Environmental Secretary, Kathleen Theoridis. We had um, visits with them last week. Uh, we met at Colleen Perry's uh, at Brasanti, Colleen Perry's. Um, well, in the first part of the day, we met with um, Secretary Keneally at, um, at Colleen's business to talk to us about how COVID-19 has impacted her business and how she's sort of revamped things. 
And then we went to Pat Lee's, at Horseshoe hosted us for coffee and discussion, uh, a great round table with uh, Secretary Keneally um, to really just discuss all of these, the lifting of the restrictions and moving forward and some ideas with regard to funding and grants and tr just trying to help businesses get back on their feet again. So that was a very helpful um, visit and both Senator Tyre and Representative Jones also joined us for a walk through Ipswich River Park it, that afternoon with um, Secretary uh, Theoridis um, regarding uh, some funding that's available. So we got to show her the, you know, the, the lay of the land there and the areas that are, you know, being enjoyed by the public. We were also actually uh, uh, joined by um, Ashley Stoll, but she's the undersecretary of community development the early part of the day. So um, we just appreciate their effort. They're making North Reading uh, part of their day and part of their focus and, and we'll be working to try to get some more focus in on those issues um, in the future. And um, that's about it. That was a, hopefully a productive meetings and it seemed to be productive with the business owners. So we just appreciate the time they took to spend with us and appreciate Senator Tarr and Representative Jones time as well. And with that, we will end motion to adjourn. Motion Anyone? I mean, we can still keep talking. No, no, motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> motion by Ms. Distuto, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye.